Okay, there, that lets me regain a bit of magicka. I hate you guys. You'll never find me. I'm a ghost. See, spooky ghost. So let me just see if I can drive in the wrong side of the... Oh boy. Police don't mind when you do that, do they? <laughs> oh! Whoops! <laughs> um... Very sorry about that. And now these guys are back. What the hell? There we go. Two for one. The only companionship I have on all of Dantooine. You live alone with this droid. He is a personal assistance droid. My husband was a genius at constructing droids. He made this one capable of taking care of me for the rest of my life. As the last legacy of my husband, for my own personal ease of mind, I need him back. His absence gnaws at me like a gaping wound. Wow, she really misses her droid, doesn't she? <laughs> okay. Here we go. I can't believe I killed it. I just want to go home and read. I know the feeling. How are you not dead? Excuse me. Hell game. <clears throat> but that was unexpected. That was unexpected. <laughs> Magic. From a time long forgotten. Remind me not to take a dump in that hole. Do you really have to make jokes? Yeah. It's in my contract. I don't know where we're going with this. I'm a little nervous. Wow. Because of his sunburn, the map on Palado's back is peeling off. Oh. I really wish I didn't have to do that. Ooh. 
There we go. Oh, shoot! No! No! <laughs> Damn it! It's a good thing I saved recently. I was also looking at Star Citizen. Maybe you'll try that next week. Very nice, Jim. I've been having fun with it so far, even though I've never left this city, let alone this planet. So, this is my fancy ship that I got with my old AMD R9 video card that I actually started streaming using. And then a few years ago, I upgraded to the 1080 and haven't uh, used it since. But I got this ship at the same time that I got that card. This is a racing ship. It has no cargo capacity at all. So it, it would be very difficult to try to make any money with this. Although, it might be possible to manually stuff some cargo in the back there, I guess. But uh, yeah, that's about that. All right, guys, you ready? Nice. Whoa, that was a shot and a half. Did you freaking die already? Oh, you're the alpha. Okay. What? Wow. This could be problematic. Mm. Oh my god! Oh! <laughs> that was so freaking close. Let's go for it. Oh. Look at that. Holy crap, it looks so nice. Sorry. Sorry. But the wrath of Hoachley of Hoachley was great, and as the sacrifice passed each of the four rooms dedicated to the sun god, the sun disappeared or reappeared in the sky. Okay, that's cool. I don't know if I've ever built this one before. Uh, really, really thirsty now. If only I could have a small drink of fresh water, I might have the strength to sail on. <laughs> oh, but I know there's nothing but ocean for miles and miles. If I could reach land, I might find water and some food. Fruit, maybe. Something to fight off the scurvy and help me get my strength back. Hmm, maybe some bananas. Oh, why do I torture myself like this? 
I might as well wish for some chicken and a big mug of grog for all the good it'll do me. <laughs> hey! I have not... I have not looted that, sir! I know, Nobby. It's almost like it remembers that we already looted the entire place. How dare they. That's amazing. Okay. Now they can get out of there. Before they get eaten alive. That's a handy cloak. Too late. Oh, whoa. Oh, crap. Ugh. Let me guess. You escaped with only a flesh wound. Oxygen. Oh, shoot. Okay, I'm dead. <laughs> First death. I can just kind of circle around the island here, because I need a boat to get to the neighboring island anyway, which I think is close enough that you can use these smaller ones. Or, I could just go on foot and see if there's another boat I can use. Folks, welcome back to the Library of Lore. Tonight we're going to be playing some Star Trek, but none of the usual Star Trek games we've played in the past. Uh, okay, we are going to play Star Trek Infinite, which just came out today. So, let me see if I can get it launched. I've never streamed it. Oh! It downloaded content. I wonder if they've already managed to patch it. I've got a launcher here. Nope, it's well. Maybe maybe they patched it, but um, they haven't fixed the problem. Where I do not seem to have the deluxe pack. So sadly, no pre-order bonus content, which means no California class and no uniforms. But that's okay. We'll just try out the base game, and when they get that fixed, we'll be able to experience it. It's infinite. That means it has Tendi and Rutherford, right? I don't know. We will find out. That might be part of the pre-order bonus that I can't access. So I'll get the game itself going. Hopefully you'll be able to see that. There we are. So how's it going tonight, Aaron Laura? I hope you're doing all right. Doing good? Excellent. Yeah, I do like everything bagels.
There's a place I get bagels from occasionally that has the uh, the everything bagel topping. They do it a little heavy on the garlic, which I really, really like. Yeah, it's going well, Sketchy. How are you doing? We're just getting started here. The Cerritos will not be available immediately at the start for Federation sessions. It will become available as you play. If other DLC is absent or not working, please let us know. While there is a known issue in the launcher with DLC checksums and the team is working on getting that fixed, as far as we know, things should still be accessible despite that visual error. Hey, what do you know? Thank you. I didn't have time really to check into it in detail. Okay. I have no interest in playing the Klingons, Romulans, or Cardassians, I have to admit. So we're going to do the United Federation of Planets. So it looks like they are based around justice and excellence. Every person is entitled to achieve as much as they can. We have a responsibility to create this environment. And the effects that gives are increased recruitable scientists capped by plus one, pop growth from immigration. See, you can see the Stellaris influence there. Uh, pop growth from immigration, plus 15%. Diplomatic expertise. By listening carefully to other cultures, not only do we understand more about them, but we deepen our understanding of the universe itself. Increases opinion after first contact protocols by plus 30. Envoys improve relations with minor powers, plus 2. Was digging in to make sure check if they'd been alerted to this bug yet. Happy to see that response. Yes. You're not a fan of the everything topping? Oh, wow. Well, I mean, not all toppings are for everyone. And we are a federated democracy. Holds an election every 10 years to select a new ruler, empire modifier, diplomatic influence cost minus 25%. Federated democracies have the same structure as a representative republic existing semi-autonomously autonomously, under a single central government based on the principles of universal rights, liberty, equality, peace, justice, and progress. This government holds regular elections where all citizens can vote on who should represent them. Okay, so we will be playing as the Federation. We are also going to play the tutorial. The tutorial is only available for the United Federation of Planets. If you wish to play as a different empire after the tutorial ends, you will need to return to the main menu and begin a new game. Would you like to start the tutorial? Yes. We have Excellent, lost a Sketchy. True I'm glad to hear it. Hero. The United Federation of Planets, widely referred to as the Federation, was founded in 2161 by the Andorians, humans, Tellarites, and Vulcans, pioneers in the quest for interstellar exploration and cooperation between species. The Federation is profoundly rooted in the principles of liberty, equality, peace, justice, and progress. To further these goals of peaceful cooperation, scientific development, and space exploration. Federation members work together with full trust to exchange knowledge and resources as well as expand their territory through diplomatic means. High education and diplomatic expertise. Engage. Red alert. The Klingon colony on Kitomer is under attack by a Romulan ambush. A Federation starship is already inbound to intercept the Romulan birds of prey and provide support to the besieged colonists. However, given the possibility of further attacks, we must perform an immediate review of our readiness protocols. Let us begin. Make it so. Oh, it's possible, Sketchy. But it's all right if you don't like it. You don't have to like everything. In space, one's frame of reference is everything. Take a moment to familiarize yourself with the camera. Zoom in or out using the mouse wheel. Holding right-click and moving the mouse will rotate or tilt your field of view, while the WASD and arrow keys move the camera directionally. When ready, click on our construction ship to begin the readiness protocol. Okay. So far, this is very Stellaris-like. I like that you can tilt the camera, actually. That's pretty cool. Hey, Callan Ray, how are you doing? Yeah, flavor's completely subjective. I mean, take me. I can't eat anything seafood, basically, because there's a flavor that everything seafood seems to have, and I don't even know if it's a real thing or if it's something my brain makes up, but it's there in just about everything that lives in the water, and I can't stand it. 
This is the beating heart of Starfleet, a Federation starship. To move the ship, use the move button on the ship's action panel. Ships can also be moved with right click. <coughs> Generally, right clicking on any object in the game will open a drop down menu showing all available interactions with that object. For now, use the action panel to move our construction ship to a destination of your choice. Doing all right, I suppose. That is excellent to hear, Kellenray. How about you and everyone else? I'm feeling a lot better today. I actually remained sick through most of yesterday. Uh, actually, through pretty much all of yesterday and had a kind of a crappy night last night. So, word of warning, not only do I have to make sure I end around three at the latest because I have to get up for stream tomorrow afternoon, but I didn't get a huge amount of sleep last night, so I don't know how long I'm going to last, but I'm pretty excited for this game, so... Uh, you know, I'm actually feeling pretty good. But yeah, uh, I had to end stream early last time, a few days ago, because I was feeling ill, and that stuck around for a while. But I'm mostly over that now. Uh, okay, so let's see. But yeah, super excited for this game. Ships can be moved with right-click. Generally, right-clicking on any object in the game will open a drop-down menu showing all available interactions. For now, use the action panel to move our construction ship to a destination of your choice. Well... I'd recommend not waiting until afternoon to wake up for a stream. You may end up late if you do that. That's probably a good idea, and that's why I can't stream until 4 in the morning on these bonuses anymore. Especially on Thursday nights. Because, uh, you know, starting at noon and ending at 4, that's already ending stream 8 hours from the start of the next stream, which means I don't have 8 hours to sleep. Move here. Notice that our starship is not yet accelerating. Unpause the game, and your orders will be set into motion. Now, time is moving forward, and our starship is accelerating toward its destination. You have the ability to pause, unpause, or change the relative speed of time. Time is a mysterious thing. Even the most experienced Starfleet captains do not fully understand its complexity. Lies. That's an interesting design of ship. It really doesn't look all that terribly Federation, does it? I mean, I guess it actually... What's the year? 2346? It kind of looks like some of the the J-class slower ships that we saw in Enterprise. Because the possibility of prolonged conflict with the Romulans has been thrust upon us, we must optimize our logistics. Resources are required to construct new space stations and ships, settle new worlds, and keep all other aspects of the Federation running. Remember not to let our resources fall below the minimum threshold. No promises. Information is power, and the key to peacefully resolving interstellar conflicts. For this, we must rely on tooltips. To learn more about something in the HUD, hover over it and view its tooltip. For an I like example, she calls the, the HUD of instead of HUD. Icon to the left. We will need new structures to defend ourselves from the Romulans and minerals to build them. First, select our construction ship and choose Build Mining Station from the action panel. Then, find the highlighted object where a mining station can be built, and select it to begin construction. If a highlighted object is not visible, try moving the camera. Okay. Our mining station will soon be under construction. We can build mining stations on many nearby astronomical bodies due to the high metallicity in this region of the galaxy. Keep in mind that our construction ship is en route to its destination. We it will is be notified June 2346. United Federation of Planets. Seoul Mining Station. Luna Research Station. Oh, this is right out of the shows. I love this. FTL inhib. Oh, Space Dog 1? They haven't even turned it into a museum yet. Aw. Very cool.
Okay. Um, our mining station is operational, and its minerals are being added to our monthly resources. Not every station will yield the same output, as natural resources are not uniformly distributed Aaron, throughout our galaxy. As the Federation prepares to face the Romulan threat, proper management of our planets will be critical to ensure neither our prosperity nor the rights of our member species are harmed. Select the highlighted planet and open its planet summary screen. Remember to zoom out if you need a wider view. Uh, select the highlighted planet. Buildings so, or where communities Earth. gather and work together to create things greater than the sum of their parts. A free <clears> slot <throat> must be available before a building can be constructed. Once the building is finished, it will have an upkeep cost. The effects for all buildings can be checked in their tooltips. Select a free slot and choose any building that suits the needs of the population, such as a replicator. Well, we can't call ourselves the Federation if we don't have... Uh, can I... You're kind of blocking the menu here. Can I... Okay, this is problematic. Administration offices... I can't even see what's behind this thing. Can I not get rid of you? Holding cells, holographic environment simulator, housing corridor, uh... Memorial Monument, Military Base. We'll do a replicator. Districts are areas of a planet zoned for specific uses, such as housing our pops, producing resources, or creating jobs. Intelligently zoning our districts can mean the difference between a successful world and one with deep systemic issues that will negatively impact our wider civilization, including our ability to defend ourselves from external threats. Go ahead and build a city district. Okay. Buildings need pops to use them. It doesn't make sense to pay upkeep costs on empty buildings, so a world should be home to a sufficient number of pops for its infrastructure. Unemployment will rise if pops are mismanaged, but can be reduced by creating enough jobs. Okay. Close the planet management window by clicking the X in the window's top right or with the escape key. 2347 is far more interesting but less important. Oh, interesting. It's keeping us in 2346. We had been in August of 2346, but now it's rolled around and we're in April of 2346. I wonder if there's something going on in this year that's tied into those events that the tutorial is, uh, yeah, relevant to. You mentioned the Kittimer massacre, right? That's more the Klingons than the Romulans, though. Close the planet management window by clicking the X in the window's top right or with the escape key. Above all, readiness means having the best possible defenses for our own worlds. Star bases can be upgraded with shipyards and many other valuable structures. Star bases also give us ownership of the systems we have surveyed and formalize the status of those systems as part of our territory. Find the highlighted star base and select it. I wonder where it could be. Whatever course you decide, a strong response to the Romulan attack on Kittimer will require us to build ships. This starbase already has a shipyard. The specific modules a starbase has depends on its intended use. Open yep, the, the Kittimer tab. massacre. Okay, Starfleet's that's cool. Starfleet's charter dictates we maximize our knowledge about nearby star systems, both to broaden our scientific understanding of local space and for our own defensive purposes. We cannot protect what we don't understand. Let's build a science ship to begin surveying. Can we call it Enterprise? A new science ship has been ordered. Construction will commence soon. Remember, you can unpause the game using the time controls. Oh. I didn't mean to actually order one. I just wanted to look at the design. But I guess we'll figure it out in a moment. We need to assign a scientist to the bridge of our ship. 
Okay. Click on the empty leader portrait in the ship's action panel to assign. To recruit a new scientist, click the recruit. Hover the cursor over the trait icons to view the details of each trait. Check if any could improve survey speed. If no traits match the task at hand, any scientist will do. Choose a scientist and select recruit to assign them to the ship. Survey speed. None of them will do that. Let's go with... Davrin here. <laughs> oh my god. I don't recall any Voidcraft in Star Trek. That's funny. 2347 is interesting because Worf is adopted. Kyle, Will's father... Riker starts cheating at the martial arts. It was the last time Jean-Luc had visited his home before in TNG. The year Rolaren's father is killed, O'Brien will become a transporter chief, and the Hansons leave on the USS Raven. Damn. Select our newly recruited scientist. Success. Our scientist has been assigned. Our science ship is now fully crewed and ready for its first mission. Understood. Now it's time to fire up our warp drive and go where no one has gone before. Click on Galaxy View to zoom out and see the entire galaxy. This is our galaxy, our home, and the home of most other intelligent species we have contacted, including those hostile to us. The intricacies of anything on the galactic scale can be daunting, to say the least. To make it more easily navigable, let's examine the quick access panel to the left. Okay, quick access panel. The mission log will be our main center of operations throughout the game, and the first place where important information is updated. To open it, use the F1 key or click its icon on the quick access panel. The mission log stores all our present tasks, including active special projects and unresearched anomalies. It functions a bit like a ship's computer, but for our entire civilization. Make sure to check it frequently, and don't forget to complete missions marked tutorial for further training once this protocol is finished. Though we have much information about our nearest galactic neighbors, nothing passes sending a science ship there to perform close orbital scans, investigate anomalies, and gather physical samples. First, select the science ship, click survey in the fleet interface, open the galaxy map, and select a non-surveyed system. The ship will travel there at warp speed and closely study both the system's parent star and all of its orbiting bodies. So we haven't surveyed anything yet. Finally, the Outliner is the tool we use for quickly managing our colonies, fleets, and the various Starfleet agents we have sent across the galaxy on special assignments, such as governors and spies. Success. The Federation's security readiness has been upgraded. Although the Romulan attack on Kitimura indicates troubling times ahead, we are prepared to meet their act of aggression and any other that could harm us or our allies with a united front. The only certainty in the universe is uncertainty. As new challenges arise, it is the Federation's duty to protect the rights and dignity of all. You will proceed playing the game as the Federation continue to explore and check the mission log frequently. If you would rather play as the Klingons, Romulans, or Cardassians, return to the main menu and start a new game with a different empire. The Ashes of Kittimer. In the blink of an eye, the relative peace enjoyed throughout the Alpha and Beta quadrants for the past half century lies shattered. A brutal Republican ambush on the Klingon colony of Kittimer has left over 4,000 dead. Though a Federation ship intercepted the Romulan secret transmissions, by the time they arrived, only a handful of survivors remained. This massacre marks the beginning of a new political era in our galaxy, one of opaqueness, uncertainty, renewed hatred for old rivals, and mistrust among even the staunchest alliances. How we choose to treat others will determine the future of our Federation. We will be proactive in greeting other civilizations. Policy on first contact protocol is set to proactive. We understand that the universe is a vast and unpredictable place. We'll keep this in mind during future co first contact procedures. Policy on first contact protocol is set to cautious. Now, we'll be proactive. Okay. 
Notifications um, are small round icons that appear at the top of the screen to give updates on current events. Open notifications with left click to make important decisions or to view the actions of the other civilizations in the galaxy. Right click notifications to dismiss them. Understood. To advance our knowledge of the universe, we must develop new technologies by assigning scientists to research them. Incoming transmission. Incoming transmission. Oh, man. Daggers talk. Money howls. The Klingon... It is like Stellaris. It just bombards you with everything. <laughs> The mission tree contains long-term goals for our civilization to achieve, ranging from the technological to the social and the cultural. Conditions for meeting each goal are written within their nodes. Mutual embassies, yes. Our entire intelligence community is hard at work attempting to learn the full truth about the Kittimer plot. Until we discover the reasons behind the Romulan Star Empire surprise attack on the Klingons, our spies will be unavailable to us. Tensions remain high throughout the galaxy. We will do our best to understand you. Betazoid houses. Non-player power. They want to establish mutual embassies, yes. Jolan True. Ah, uh, the Romulans. Form a commercial pact with this civilization. This will increase the trade network value of each empire and improve our relations with the United Federation of Planets. We... wait. We are the United Federation of Planets. This empire is interested in closer relations with us. Of course they are. They want to spy on us. Okay. Now, where was our starship? USS Sentinel. This is our science ship. While all Starfleet vessels are technically science ships, these vessels are specifically designed to survey star systems for resources, research anomalies, and complete special projects. Okay, let's... Let's go here. Survey system. Should we survey or explore first? Let's survey. I just want to start. Oh, independent supported. Incoming Klingon. transmission. Incoming transmission. Oh my god. Uh, Klingon Empire will now support the independence of Bajoran Republic. Their overlord must be none too pleased. Colonizing new planets is how we create new worlds for our pops to live on. Each colony we settle creates an opportunity for new buildings, jobs, districts, and defensive assets such as land armies. The downside is that spread increases. This can be balanced by increasing our admin capacity. To colonize a planet, we must first build a colony ship to carry our settlers there. Colony ships cost alloys and food and will take time to reach their destinations. We will do our best to understand you. We propose form a research agreement with this civilization. Both will gain a bonus when researching technologies discovered by the other empire. Sounds good to me. Jolan True. The Romulan Star Empire wants us to establish mutual embassies, yes. Designating our colonies allows us to specialize those worlds to produce specific resources. For example, assigning the designation bureaucratic world to a colony will increase administrative capacity. Desi uh, designating a colony will have a drawback that depends on the designation. Okay. Romulan Star Empire supports the independence of the Bajoran Republic. So nobody likes the Cardassians is what we're getting at here. Okay, so, um... Diplomatic relations determine the political situation of the galaxy. Neighbors that have negative relations with us are more likely to question our actions and might even adopt a hostile attitude towards us and declare war on us. Conversely, political relations with neighboring civilizations can lead them to opening their borders to us and forming commercial pacts with us. 
It's easier to affect relations with minor powers and harder to affect relations with major powers. Some powers might also have a higher starting opinion of us and some lower depending on our history. Go ahead and improve relations with another civilization. Uh, okay, I think we've already done that a few times. So I don't recognize that species, although I think we saw that character in one of the shows. Obviously we've got Deanna and Will here. That looks like a Cardassian. That looks like, what was her name? Worf's mate. And uh, that's Romulan, clearly. Okay. Oh, this is War- Oh no! Wolf 359. Edicts are used to drastically push our economy, military, or general efforts in precise directions. Kalar, thank you, yes. Edicts have a cost, and once picked, they will stay locked for a given period of time. After the mandatory period, chosen edicts can be unchecked again, freeing up our edict capacity, making room for us to choose something else. Just like every other major civilization has a unique economy, each also has unique edicts. Go ahead and activate an edict. Uh, here, let's pause. contact screen is where we can view all of the other civilizations we have established communications with in the Alpha and Beta Quadrants, as well as their opinions of us and our diplomatic options toward them. Um. The mission tree shows the watershed moments in our civilization's possible past and future histories. Each node describes a unique culmination of events that have fundamentally changed or will change our social, economic, and civil trajectories. Choose carefully. A timeline is a delicate thing. Understood. We can build the Enterprise? That's amazing. Where no one has gone before. After centuries of turmoil, a new golden age has dawned upon our galaxy. It is time for us to fulfill Starfleet's true charter to explore strange new worlds, to boldly go in the name of peace and science. Uh, scientists assigned to science ships, so we need another one, and we need to survey ten systems. So I think what we're going to do is take a quick peek at our science ship here, because I want to see what that looks like. Where are you? Oh, that's cool. That's a familiar-looking design. Love it. Excellent. This is our galaxy. Most vessels cannot travel unlimited distances. That was the D. With the exception of science ships. A starship's warp range determines the maximum reach it can move in a given direction. A ship's warp range is determined by its proximity to the nearest starbase. Building starbases will increase our overall warp bubble, allowing our fleets to venture farther into the unknown. Diplomatic constraints, such as other civilizations closing their borders to us, will decrease a starship's warp range. Pay close attention to who allows us to travel freely through their territory. While this map is open, clicking on another civilization's territory can provide some basic information about them. Changing the map mode can reveal different information, such as others' opinions of us, AI attitude, and more. Okay. Yeah, uh, where was that? That was... Government is where we'll need that thing. But yeah, uh, that looks like... The ship in this one looks Excelsior class to me. But this one, that's definitely the Enterprise D. That's Galaxy class for sure. The government screen shows our current ruler, values, and any modifiers that may be affecting the day-to-day -day functioning of our civilization. Our demographics data can also be viewed in the tab below. Okay, um... Oh, no, I'm looking for edicts. I thought that would be under government. Ratify new civic, but no edicts. Victory. Oh, I see, okay. Wow, there's a lot to go through here.
expansion, the expansion planner. planner is where we can view all possible habitable worlds within reach of our civilization, as well as each one's planet class, which can determine whether or not a world may be suitable for terraforming. We can also construct colony ships here that will transport our settlers and choose which species will be the best fit for that planet's habitat. Planets must be fully surveyed and research completed on all anomalies in the area before a planet can be colonized. The system must also have a star base. Okay. So it looks like we need Edicts this Edicts are proclamations that change the priorities of our economy through the weight of law. Most edicts carry a penalty, which can be viewed in the tooltip. Exploration protocols. With clear and precise manuals and training and examination protocols, our efforts can be greatly improved. Survey speed plus 25%, anomaly discovery chance plus 15%, and a small hit to monthly energy credits. Edict issued across the Federation. There we go. Okay, now. The planet summary screen shows us important details about a world and its people, including its districts, resource production, and consumption rates, current levels of stability, and planetary designation, if any have been set. Planets can be set to be automatically managed here as well. Understood. Okay, I'll check that uh, when I get on break, which should be reasonably soon. Thank you, Aaron Lor. We still got about maybe 20 minutes. Uh, okay, I guess it was more the starbase I wanted rather than Earth star itself. Starbases are the most basic non-planetary units of our civilization. Each starbase we build brings a new system into the Federation. We can also capture hostile starbases by making claims on them. Starbases can be upgraded to include shipyards and other valuable modules. Their presence in a system also expands our borders and increases the warp range of our starships. Once a starbase is built and that system falls under our jurisdiction, we are free to build research and mining stations there, or to terraform and settle any worlds that may be hospitable to life. Okay. Federation News Bulletin. Traditions are grouped together in tradition trees that represent the values we stand for and how we intend to uphold them. In order to adopt the tradition, a cost of unity must be paid. Costs increase with each tradition adopted. When a tradition is unlocked, a special effect is gained. Additionally, each time we unlock a whole tradition tree, a new ascension perk becomes available to us. Go ahead and adopt a tradition tree. Traditions. The tradition screen is where we can view our civilization's tradition trees. A tradition tree must be adopted in order to access its traditions. Adopting individual traditions costs unity, which is produced by buildings and jobs or earned by completing certain events. A significant amount of unity is required to unlock both tradition trees and the traditions they contain. So it is wise to stockpile as much of this valuable resource as possible. Okay. Let's keep it paused for a moment. Um, being protected means being prepared. Without the necessary precautions, offensive strategies fall short. Conquest. What you fight for is what you get if you fight hard. Nothing in this galaxy is handed on a, sil on a latinum platter. Nice. Uh, knowledge is power, and so is being the first to make groundbreaking discoveries. I think we're going to adopt this one for now. Tradition accepted. Okay, so that gives us scientific enlightenment. All scientists gain additional traits plus one. Oh, do I? Oh, okay. So I don't have that yet. But I have enough to take one of these. Undaunted exploration. The best antidote against idleness is the capacity to explore a mar marvelous universe. Surveying an inhabitable planet gives research times three. Surveyed inhabitable planet are colonized faster, plus 25%. That sounds really good for this stage of the game. 
tradition accepted. Federation News Bulletin. Our policies reflect our civilization's current ideology. Each policy stands for a different socio-political outlook on matters of diplomacy, war, culture, education, first contact, economy, and trade, as well as how we interact with other civilizations, and what plans we seek to prioritize for our own. Policies can allow or disallow certain actions and can provide positive, negative, or mixed rewards. Go ahead and change a policy. Policies, pol uh, edicts and policies. Policies are the laws to which our government and citizens are bound. Though nothing is set in stone, some legal positions cannot be taken by every type of government, and some may be further limited by our level of technology. Okay. Diplomatic stance, cooperative, war doctrine, skirmish tactics. First contact protocol. We cannot change our stance on this policy until 2356. Jim, thank you so much for 34 months now. How are you doing tonight? Thank you so much for the shout out, Aaron Laura. I really appreciate it. What does this button do? Trade policy. Current policy, green fuel sources. Alternative building materials, cryostasis containment, neutron bombardment, scholarship incentive programs. Investing in the future generations means safeguarding our path forward. Replicator streamlining. Replicators are essential to our way of life, yet we have just scratched the surface of what this technology has to offer. Field advantage, force projection, we will strike wherever and however we choose. No retreat. The enemy will never see us coming. Combat disengagement chance, emergency FTL damage risk. Okay. I like the idea of the replicator streamlining. Just wrap things up on my end tonight, saw you were on and thought I'd stop by. What were you playing tonight, Jim? It's always a pleasure to see you. What's going on? Have you been checking this game out at all? Feisty. The Empire will attempt to bully weaker empires into submission to their will. Yeah, um, that's one important thing to note about this game. I read a very little bit about it. Not a lot to know any detail, but just a little bit. And one thing I did pick up on is that while you're quickest and safest road to victory is to follow the sort of, you know, the um, the canon path for the civilization that you're playing in this game. You don't have to. You can actually lead the Federation down a more authoritarian road if you want to. It'll be a little more difficult, and you can't necessarily turn it into a carbon copy of something like, say, the Klingon Empire but you're not forced into the role of the Federation as defined by Star Trek lore. Just doing some final side quests and collectible gathering in the frozen wilds. Oh, very nice. Feisty, duplicitous, dominating. Now we're gonna stick with cooperative. Okay, so basically these these seem to be defined by the resources you gather. I think we're going to stick with green fuel sources for now. Standard curriculum, no bonuses or penalties. Fast track curriculum, leader level cap plus one, leader lifespan plus 10 years, leader cost plus 50%. 
full scholarship, leader level cap plus two, leader lifespan plus 20 years, leader cost plus 100%. Okay. Hey, Anstaro, what's going on? But only if you get to have Will Wheaton as the Emperor, that would be amazing. I haven't heard anything about whether this game has any special guest voices. I would suspect probably not, but you never know. Wait, are we... Oh! Oh, oh! Okay, hang the on. leader's menu is where we can hire, dismiss, or assign governors, scientists, admirals, generals, and spies in need of work. Spies are not immediately available upon game start due to extenuating political circumstances in the galaxy. If they are still unavailable at the time of this message, they will return shortly. <laughs> Understood. This one has plus 25% survey speed. So we're going with Bras Srani of the USS Silversides. That is excellent to hear, Onstara. Much better than the alternative. The Resolute Decorative Skin? Nice, Jim. Uh, where's the Silver Sides? We've got that selected. Let's go to our Galactic View, and we're going to maybe survey this unknown star over here. Okay, and then we've got the lion heart. That one also needs a leader. Research speed, new worlds. We'll go with Hillary Singh. She can go visit this one. Hey, Hex, how's it going? It's good to see you. How's everyone doing tonight? Jartak. Intel level high. Drago. Oh, where's our other ship? What's this one doing? Oh, okay, so they're still surveying. Let's take a look at this Jartak system. Well, there's a reason for that, Hex. This actually started out as Stellaris. It's a fork of the Stellaris code base. And it was developed by the people that created... Um, there was a recent Master of Orion game. They didn't call it Master of Orion 4, but for all intents and purposes, it was Master of Orion 4 a few years ago. I streamed it a few times. It's the developers that made that, and this was published by Paradox, the people that did Stellaris. So there is a connection. There is a very, very deep and close connection with Stellaris. Neutral fleets. Okay, so this is a Cardassian science ship. Not surprisingly, they're interested in that system too. Incoming transmission. Jolan True. We propose form a non-aggression pact with the Romulan Star Empire. We will be unable to attack each other while this is in effect. We have Theoretically. surveyed a new star system. 
Though just another day for most Starfleet officers, this is nonetheless an important step in continuing our mission of exploring the galaxy in the name of peace and science. The Wolf 359 system has been fully surveyed. Uh, no. I mean, that's true, but it's not just that. It's Stellaris with a different skin and... A lot of stuff about the way the different factions in the game play out are vastly different and customized to make it very, very Star Trek. Ben, will that survey come in handy in the future? Yes. Now that we have surveyed a neighboring star system, we should establish ownership of it by building a star base. Outposts are the smallest type of star base stations. They cost influence and alloys to build, but extend the borders of our civilization and also the warp range of our starships. Star bases can be upgraded to host better defenses and a greater variety of modules once the relevant technologies are unlocked. Okay, uh, now do we have an engineering? We do, we've got the Curie. This is our construction ship which is used for building orbital stations. Once a star system has been fully surveyed, we can order our construction ship to move there and build research and mining stations if the relevant deposits exist in the system's orbital bodies. Though most of these processes are automated, the raw materials still need to be transported to their destinations. Understood. Build Starbase. Put a big one in there, yes, no reason. <laughs> Fleets are the main organizational unit of the Federation's forces under the umbrella of Starfleet Command. All Starfleet ships double as research or combat vessels as needed and can be ready for action at a moment's notice. An admiral should ideally be assigned to command each individual fleet. Understood. Wouldn't fleet captains also serve that purpose? Anomaly. One of our most capable away teams has landed on the cold and deserted AND4S5. Further research is necessary we to determine habitability. Excellent. Uh, research it. Relative difficulty challenging. Uh... Born to Trek. I love that. We'll leave that be for now. I'll send one of my other captains who's better suited to it. Fleet or slow, it's all good. Wow. Uh, so what one is... Wait. Is Drago fully... Intel level full? Wow. Okay, that was quick. No orders. Well, let's go here. Ms. Singh is very impressive. What were her traits again? Man, she doesn't even have the survey speed bonus. Class M planet. Okay, so we clearly, we need another engineering ship. Where's Starbase? Here we go. Space Dock 1. A new tradition to teach us more about ourselves. Traditions available. Oh. Technologies are where we will dedicate the majority of our research. There are few limits to what our scientists can discover. It is recommended to keep each research slot filled with a scientist whose traits best suit them for their field of study. Once research has been assigned, a priority can be set which will place that technology at the forefront of our efforts. USS Curie completed the construction of a starbase in orbit of Wolf 359. We have completed construction on our starbase and a new star system is now under our hegemony. Research model. Improvements to our zero gravity construction methods allow us to build outposts with star ports. Federation News Bulletin. Upgrading outposts to starports. Wait, what? 
Catfish wins. What the heck? Thank you so much for the raid. I was gonna put a Skyrim joke in here, but everything I found got Dunmer and Dunmer. How's it going, Catfish? It's so good to see you. Welcome on in. Also, three minute warning. Um, okay. Guys, make sure you go follow Catfish. They've been a friend of the channel for a while now. What were you up to? Please tell me all about your stream. I would love to hear about it. Uh, also, if you are new here to the stream, my name is Gordon McLeod. I'm a variety streamer here on Twitch. I play a wide variety of mostly single-player story-driven games, with excellent character and narrative development, as well as some strategy games like this one. Sandboxy games, also like this one. Uh, classic RPGs and adventure games, that kind of thing. And occasionally I do Lego builds. I will be starting one of those in less than a week. So if any of that sounds good to you, please feel free to hit the follow button. And I do have a little bit of a video to uh, welcome you in properly. Hopefully it won't scare too many of you away. Welcome on in, folks. Let's get the stream started, shall we? Whoa! Oh, crap. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, uh, runaway helicopter. Oh, damn it. Oh, no. No, no, no. No, no. Oh, shoot. Aspect ratio. Oh, no, 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 no. No oh, crap. Whoa. Yes, whoa. <laughs> okay, that. Let's go for it. Oh. Hey, I have not, I have not looted that, sir. May still be coming, actually. Welcome on in, Raiders. Thank you so much for coming on over here. Uh, hopefully that didn't scare too many of you away. Uh, welcome on in. Bionic Llama, just catching up on chat a little bit here. How was your stream, Catfish? What were you up to? Ho oh, Hogwarts Legacy. How was that treating you? I hope it went well. Okay, what have we got going on here? Yeah, I'd love to hear all about your stream. What you've been up to lately, what kind of games you've been playing. All that kind of good stuff. Upgrading outposts to starports allows them to build starbase modules such as shipyards, as well as other important defensive and economic structures. So uh, you might be able to tell we are checking out the new game Star Trek Infinite tonight. It is a very, very close relative of Stellaris, but obviously Star Trek themed. And so far, I'm having a really good time with it. No problem, Bionic, no problem. If you haven't been here before, there's no reason you should recognize it. People who have been here a while, I really need to make a new raid video because, yeah, uh, I've had that one going for some time now. I need to get one a little more up to date. I think the most recent clip I've got in there is from 2020, and I've got an awful lot of clips from the last few years. <laughs> so I need to take the time and make a few more of those raid videos and maybe just have them alternate or something new or at least a few variants yeah i'm thinking maybe a few variants would be good because there's an awful lot of games to cover 
I don't like starting games and not finishing them. We finished Liza P third playthrough on New Game Plus. Oh, damn. Then we beat Soma and Alice Madness Returns for Horror Month. Very nice. My chosen games for Horror Month this year, uh, for the third year running, I've been playing a little bit of Days Gone, which I've been enjoying the heck out of. Oh, uh, three minute warning. I snoozed the alerts. Otherwise, I was going to have to start the break almost immediately after that raid video. Uh, so three more minutes and we'll be taking a proper break. But yeah, uh, I've been playing a bit of Days Gone. Same playthrough. Been doing that for about a couple of years now. Started in 2021 and still going on that same run. Uh, I've also started playing Dead Rising 4, which has been ridiculous fun. It's really, really good. So I'm going to get back to that one fairly soon. So those are my chosen games for this year. But uh, Alice Madness Returns and Soma are excellent choices. I've never played Soma, but I've seen so many people play it that I know the story very well, and I love it. It's really great. Let's go ahead and upgrade a Starbase to a Starport. I mean, I'm going to get our researchers assigned first, I think. Oh, uh, let's pause. So this is a little less crazy. Lorak is available. So, wait, um... For physics... Field manipulation, that might be physics, right? We'll do that one. Oh, Little Nightmares, yeah, that also looks like a really good one. And Little Nightmares too. The Little Nightmares games are so much fun. Yeah, they look a little creepy, which I guess is perfect for this month. Um, what the heck? Let's do survey speed. We'll claim early game advantage in survey. We're going to go with... Leader experience gain, research speed materials. That sounds like engineering to me. Just make sure that's the correct society and engineering. So, sign that one. Shoot, where do I get my no exploration map mode? Not government. The fleet manager is where we design the schematics for our military fleets. When dealing with dozens or even hundreds of ships, management can be vastly simplified by using this menu. We started limbo but can't get past a jump. Need to finish that too. Interesting, Catfish. Yeah, I've seen limbo but never played that. That one... I, I don't know for sure if that one would be for me. It looks a little platformer for my taste, but sometimes those can be okay. But I do have to start that break now, guys. So if you need to get up and grab some food or a drink or a snack, this is a very good time to do it. I will be running more clips in the meantime. So if you do have to watch ads, first of all, thank you. And second of all, you're not going to miss anything. So I'll be right back in three and a half to five. There you are. It dumped it right and literally next to me. <laughs> Damn. Um, is that the headless horseman running beside his horse? We've stopped. What is it? Chasing his horse. I've never seen this before. That's amazing. I know farmers are hostile, but I. I don't know if we can take another hit. Oh, 
Whoa. <laughs> okay. That didn't help as much as I was hoping it might. <laughs> it's not working. No power's running through any of this. We gotta get him open Stop. manually. I am the ranking officer here. State your intentions. We are under siege. Explain yourselves. What does it look like? We're here to rescue you. And yet, you cannot even open a door. <laughs> You're really not in a position to be picky, sir. Whoa there. I wonder if maybe the spear would be easier. Ah! Oh, jeez. That doesn't look scary at all. I expect there's going to be zero problems with this. This is fine. This is going to be totally okay. Surely this can't be a good idea. No kidding. Starfield's going to come out, and every other game in existence is going to stop. Big. Uh, clearly, I need to rethink my addition of anti gravity mods. I don't like your attitude. I'd better teach you a lesson. Why okay, I'm back. It's actually kind of interesting. Starfield didn't cause everything else to stop existing for nearly as long as I thought it was going to. Though I still do love Starfield, and I'm going to be playing that one for years. Thank you, Erinlar. Thank you, Sketchy. Thank you, Galenray. Uh, let's see. Fleet manager. I don't need that. What am I looking for? Right, I still need a society scientist. I hope I can hire somebody. Surveying Beta Penthe, Physics Research, Jartak, USS Sentinel. Leadership gain, research speed, military theory. We could go with Mr. Brenner here. New worlds. Either of these could be good. I'm going to go with the younger ones so they don't need replacing as quickly. Oh, no. I don't have enough resources. What am I missing? I need credits. Crap. Okay. Well, um... It was not actually made by Paradox. Sketchy. It was published by Paradox. The developers of this game were a different outfit. They were a different studio working under Paradox's publishing uh, arm, and uh, they have a pretty good pedigree themselves. I don't know if many of you remember this, but a number of years ago, actually, there was a brand new game in the very old Master of Orion series of games, which is very similar to Stellaris in the, you know, kind of grand strategy 4X in space kind of mold civilization in space basically and uh, they made a new Master of Orion game and those same developers are the ones who made this one so you know we're talking about a lot of combined experience here on the publisher and developer side so it's one of the reasons I was so excited plus of course I love Star Trek so let me see we are going to work on General level cap, recruitable generals cap. Unsynthesized food center. I think we'll go with that one. Now, we're not going to get any progress because we don't have a scientist yet. I think I built too many science ships, but that's all right. Uh, and for engineering research, auxiliary impulse engine, asteroid cracking. 
and improved energy production. Breaching the light speed barrier requires an increase in energy production. Decelerating energy is used to recharge propulsion systems, reducing fuel costs and improving maneuverability. Let's do this one. I know, Kellen Ray, it's shocking, I'm sure, but it's true. following since February 2018 and just finding this out now. I know, right? Okay, what else have we got going on? Traditions available. We have enough unity to adopt a new tradition. Okay, so we could go with scientific enlightenment. Or we could go with empiricism. To observe is to know. No theoretical model, no matter the degree of certainty, can replace knowledge gained through experience. Scientific education is the most basic requirement for galactic civilizations. Curriculums are designed to focus on scientific literacy from an early age. Laws are based on the latest data and theoretical models. Scientists are celebrated and given high places of societal importance. All scientists gain additional traits. Yes, we're going to do this one. Tradition accepted. And ongoing research lacks scientists. Yeah, I'm working on that game. Okay. Uh, let's check out what our ships are doing. No orders. Roads. Where we're going, we don't need roads. <laughs> two years before that? What goes two years before that, Sketchy? Let's explore there. Not sur oh, oh, it was Drago that's fully surveyed. And the Curie. I'll move them there so we have a bit of a speed advantage. Who needs science when you have guns? People who want better guns. Uh, good question, Aranor. It looks reasonably sizable. And this is only the Alpha and Beta Quadrant. It does not include the Gamma and Delta Quadrant. I assume those will be expanded into playability with uh, eventual expansion packs. A paradox, exactly, Anstara. Can't make guns without science, but can't focus on guns with science. One hundred percent American, also very Klingon, Aaron Lar. We have surveyed a new star system. Excellent. A member of CAG? What is CAG? Master of Orion goes back two years? Oh. Master of Orion goes back to the 80s. Or at least the early 90s. distances in a relatively short time. Travel along warp highways bypasses all diplomatic borders, but requires using specific entry and exit points. Think of them as a sort of navigational shortcut. No one knows whether the warp highways in our galaxy occurred naturally or were put there, but their well-worn subspace composition tells us we were likely not the first to use them. Understood. Our sensors have detected waves of a higher frequency emitted in this region that the... 
that have the potential to carry ships from one location to another at increased velocity. Top analysts have confirmed that coasting on these allows for faster travel, the boost being due to a decrease in friction between the current and the ship being carried through it. Investigating these highway-like waves further will allow for us to use them to our advantage in our spacefaring endeavors. Master of Orion? Oh yes, it's been around for a long time. Oh no, you know what? It can't be the 80s. It has to be the mid-90s because it is civilization in space. And civilization itself didn't come out until 1991. So it's got to be mid-90s. Uh, the website is probably accurate, Sketchy. It's just you're probably looking at the website for a specific Master of Orion game and not for the overall franchise. The most recent Master of Orion game is the fourth one to bear the name. Okay, um, science ship. Let's get out here and survey that. Uh, we've got Beta Penthe. Perfect. Wonderful. Oh, this black hole. Oh, that's... Wow. Okay, black holes as highway nodes. Potentially. That's interesting. Conquer the stars. I'm not familiar with that subtitle. Interesting, Anzara. Construction finished on schedule. Okay, we got Jartak. And now we need to upgrade one of our star outpost things. Okay, we've got an outpost. This is Wolf 359 station. Um, upgrade. Upgrade to starport. We have surveyed a new star system. Excellent. That would be Beta Penthe. Let's check out this black hole and see if that's similar to the other one here. What's the 4X supposed to mean? It, uh, it stands for Explore, Expand, Exploit, and Exterminate. The four pillars of the genre. Great Icor. Uh, what are they doing? No orders? Okay, you go down here then and check that system out. What are we up to energy credits wise? We've got 863. surveyed a new star system. Excellent. A staircase, the Dalek's future ba ultimate barrier. Not anymore. They learned to overcome. What's up, Sketchy? Uh, I must have another construction ship, right? No, just the one? Okay.
Maybe I should fix that. We have known we were not alone in the universe since Zephram Cochran's experimental warp flight led to our first contact with the Vulcans. In the three centuries since, we have discovered many new sentient and non-sentient alien species. Yet only since our recent string of enlightening discoveries have we been able to fully realize the breadth of that abundance and conclude that our galaxy is not merely hospitable to life, but a cradle for it. I'm tempted to take this for the energy credits, but let's get the research. Um, um, no, we'll continue to search for a new life. A leader has gained a level. Is Doctor Who really over? Of course not. No, 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 no. It's far from over. Discovery log. Curlin Archaeology, difficulty 3. Orbital scans of Cthulhu 2 have detected the presence of an abundance of Curlin relic ruins. The civilization went extinct millennia ago, making archaeological finds rare, but it's worth a shot. Challenging. Uh, okay. We'll get somebody else to do that one. Okay, we do have a nimble. And now we've got the new Chicago. Incoming transmission. We have surveyed a new star system. Can we not? Wait, what? Yeah, yeah, next month we'll be getting we not only new, new Doctor system. Who, but also a bunch of new news. Our intelligence agents have concluded their investigation of the Kittimer Massacre. The colony's planetary defense system was shut down moments before the devastating series of orbital bombardments that ensued. As many of the witnesses were killed, we are lacking in first-hand accounts of the incident. However, our agents managed to locate the logs of the commander in charge of the Kittimer outpost. The notes point toward the involvement of the House of Moog. Our spies have returned and are preparing a report for the Klingon Empire. We will leave the Klingons with the information we have gathered. A new spy is recruited. Spies are special agents who are able to travel to other civilizations' territory to gather intel on them and conduct other operations to discreetly help us accomplish our goals. Espionage operations can include spreading propaganda, stealing enemy blueprints, hacking starbases, or doing counter-espionage assignments. Note that some operations can also be conducted at home within our own borders. A certain level of intel will be needed to conduct advanced operations. Let's send one of our spies on an operation. Sentinel. Oh, Cthulhu's done. Oh, okay. Well, it's, we've been building too much. Construction finished on schedule. Captain Picard cosplay, welcome. Wolf 359 Starbase has finished its construction queue. We have upgraded a star base to a star port. To boldly go where no streamer has gone before. <laughs> uh, silver sides. You know what? We should be taking advantage of some of these resources we don't have yet. Let's look at some of our... Okay, we're taking advantage of all that. But surely Wolf 359 has got to have stuff we're not taking up. Now we got that.
The planet's management menu shows an overview of our planets, their pops, and present resource output. Planetary management can be automated here, but this requires the selected planet to be specialized. Okay. We will do our best to understand you. Okay, these are the Betazoid. Uh, commercial Pact, yes. New system surveyed. Okay, this would be a good one. Curlin Archaeology. Oh, that's the Curlin Archaeology one. Sentinel. Now that that's out of the way, hello there. It's good to have you here. Gord wouldn't use engage. I usually use hit it or punch it, one or the other. But I would expect nothing less from Picard, of course. Excellent. We can recruit a new one. Destroyer of worlds. This leader's compulsion to find new technologies for killing and war may rest heavier on their conscience someday. Obsessive quick thinker. Federation News Bulletin. Through work, hard work and experience, scientist Aubrey Zhang has developed new skills. just came out it seems I know nothing about it yeah it just released well in my time zone technically yesterday if you're further out west then probably still today but if you're familiar with Stellaris then you know a lot about this because it's a very closely related game it's based on the Stellaris code base and published by Paradox Interactive So what have we got going on? Science ship. Beta Zeta. Oh, Betazoid House's space. That's interesting. They have their own space. I didn't actually realize that. Okay, that's the silver science. Let's go here. Construction finished on schedule. Perfect. Actually, I'm going to have her go to Wolf 359. You're the wrong... Mm. Yeah, let's get you to out, to out here. Played a small amount of Stellaris, just did an Empire at War playthrough, and was shocked at how easy it was. Interesting. I don't think I've ever played that game mode. This is... Oh, have we not fully s explored that yet? I guess I'll need another science ship down there. Okay, you're surveying. What is this space here? Oh, that's interesting. Lies within United Federation of Planets slash Romulan neutral zone. This is the neutral zone. It's its own sort of pseudo-empire space. Oh, Star Wars Empire at War. Okay. 
I don't think I actually I might own that. I don't think I've ever actually played it though. The diversity of life. The forest of evolution is rich with trees. Our recent studies of newly discovered life forms in our local region of space have led us to reform our previous theories about the incredible diversity of life in the universe. Simply put, there's no problem evolution cannot solve, even when lacking many components once thought to be prerequisites for life to thrive. From just the small percentage of our galaxy we have explored, it is clear that life will find a means to arise whenever possible, often in the most adverse conditions. The work of many great minds will be needed to understand these discoveries. Diversity is our strength. I'll take the credits. Just recently got back into Star Trek as a whole. Yeah. Well, this seems like a really fun way to go if you want to get back into Trek gaming. I also really recommend the other new Star Trek game that came out earlier this year. The, uh, the more Telltale Adventure style one. Yeah, Lower Decks is great, too. To teach us more about ourselves. New tradition. Okay, so we can go with empiricism. Bonus XP for surveying celestial objects. Science Incoming is low. Transmission. Um, procedural rigor. Let's maybe go with that one for now. Research oh. model. Yes. We will do our best to understand you. Migration Treaty. Our populations will be able to freely migrate between both empires. With the Beta Z, that's fine. New technology has passed testing protocols. Survey speed, excellent. Targeting systems employing Farseer sensors identify incoming enemy threats earlier, shortening response time. Let's do that one. I've been tempted to find my Star Trek legacy to play some flight combat. Interesting. After five years, Vulcan's old growth forests. It has old growth forests? have been almost completely devastated. Missing engineering vehicles have been reported along the rapidly disappearing borders of Vulcan's prehistoric woodlands. Some of these vehicles were later found grown into the trunks of old trees as if they had been swallowed. Nearby roads, too, have been repeatedly overgrown mere hours after clearing and a number of logging sites found vandalized. There have been no casualties. We will increase regulations on Vulcan's logging to preserve the old growth forests. We lose some energy credits but gain some unity. Vulcan, neural roots modifier added giving the following effects. Researcher jobs plus one, researcher's output plus 50%. That sounds amazing. Whereas if we ignore it, we lose unity. We still get the Neural Roots modifier added and the bonuses that go with it, but we also gain the Fighting with Nature modifier added, giving the following effects. Minus 10 planetary stability and minus 10 monthly energy credits. So I think we preserve the forest. I think Lower Decks has my favorite Doctor of all the shows so far. This does not surprise me. Okay, we've got idle construction ships. Captain's Log. Starfleet is broadcasting a set of personal logs to the entire Federation of Planets. The message has been flagged as communique of highest galactic importance. On screen. Star date 28920.15. As we embark on another away mission to the Gamma Quadrant, I yearn for my dearest Titus. And not a day goes by that I do not think of. Starfleet has cut the transmission. So, oh. let's just pretend that never happened. <laughs> Her attitude, yeah, she does have a great attitude. I love the episode where they have to go in search of that uh, ancient relic and its box, and I won't say any more. 
Memory Alpha. A professor by the name of Awood Full of Starfleet Academy has sent out a report that contains new suggestions on the security measures to protect our central library and Memory Alpha. That's hilarious. I love that they called it Memory Alpha. The report proposes a rigorous training program for all occupants of the library so they may be better equipped to resist mind control efforts, citing the Zetarian Massacre at Memory Alpha as the catalyst for the proposal. Professor Full assures that this program will give the Federation an advantage should mind control ever be used on the occupants again. The students of Memory Alpha will be sent to nearby Denobula 4 to participate in Professor Full's training program. Minus 100 uh, energy credits, gain 500 research, issue special project mind program. Yes, we're definitely doing that. We must protect the library. Memory Alpha is real canon. So it's not just a fancy website name. Cool. I did not actually realize that. Okay, why is the Lionheart idle? Oh, no, 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 no. Hang on. Pause. The Lionheart has work to do here. I think. Was there not something special that needed to be done in this system? No, I think it was this one. Ship. Oh, they can't do anything until the research is done on the anomaly. The Lights of Zatar is the 18th episode of the third season of the American science fiction series Star Trek, written by Jeremy Tarcher and his wife Sherry Lewis, directed by... It was first... Okay. In the episode, strange incorporeal aliens threaten the memory alpha station and the Enterprise. Okay, that's cool. My memory of the original series is getting a little bit more vague by the year. It's been a while since I watched it. Our remote monitors are showing a massive subspace disturbance, disturb, bleh, disturbance passing through the neutral zone. The disturbance is moving at alarming speeds, indicating a species with warp capability. Typically, subspace communications of this magnitude have only been observed when orders are sent out to a large fleet of starships. Yet our long-range scans detect no known interstellar fleets present in the region. So do I want research or do I want unity? We've discovered life from the far side of the galaxy or monitor the unusual activity in the neutral zone. I think we're focusing on research right now, so let's do that. Incoming transmission. Jolan True. A research agreement with the Romulan Star Empire. Our relations are surprisingly good with them. I rewatched it a few years back, right before Strange New World Season 1. Oh, that was a really good idea, actually. I kind of wish I had done that. I did not. Okay, um... Might as well get the mining station on Jupiter built. It's kind of a wonder we don't have that since it's in the soul system. We have surveyed a new star system. Excellent. Altara. Well, 
At least one of our fleets have gone missing in action. It will take them some time to return and rejoin the ranks. Oh no! The Lionheart is missing? Crap. That was our good research, Captain. Annoying. IKS Gorov. The USS Lionheart was attacked by a hostile structure while researching the Zeradex system. Though badly damaged, the vessel was able to narrowly escape. Initial reports show the crew's brave actions may have disabled or possibly destroyed whatever it was that attacked them. Our long-range scans reveal the structure's wreckage is likely still present in the Zeradex system. While survivors are being debriefed, we should locate this evidence and analyze it. This is our spy ship, a stealth vessel engineered to navigate through space undetected and asymmetrically defend Federation interests. Its warp range extends through the borders of any civilization we have contacted. These vessels travel covertly through other civilizations' territory for the purposes of espionage, such as gathering intel or conducting off-record operations. Okay. Our place in the universe. We are organic life forms with short, temporary lives. The abundance and diversity of life present in the smallest sliver of the galaxy proves that we are not unique, but one of countless other species all gazing out upon the same ocean of stars, asking the same questions about our existence and our place in the universe. Most of our citizens find this prospect awe-inspiring, but there are some who have shown a marked insistence on cleaving to outdated anthropocentric ideas. We move forward together. One of two options will happen. 50% chance of warp speed increase modifier added for 10 years, giving the following effects, warp speed plus 10%, or 50% chance of improved anomaly discovery chance modifier added for 10 years, giving the following effects, anomaly discovery chance plus 10%. And the other option, the race is on. I think I like this one. We'll see how that goes. How's Ryza doing? Okay, we have more stuff here we can take advantage of. I need an idle construction ship. Where's the Kiri? Also, where was Seoul again? We've got habitable worlds I haven't yet colonized. I haven't even built a colony ship, I believe. Colony ship. Uh, let's do human. Now, where's this spy ship? Okay, very cool. If we're gonna send it out anywhere, let's maybe go to Bajor. Research model. New technology has passed testing protocols. Improved energy production. Okay, excellent. Deuterium from mining stations plus 10%. Ice mining station. Nebula gathering station. Plasma drills are used to blow asteroids to rubble, then particle filter sails deployed to sift through their dust for precious ores. Mm. In 
Injecting subterranean glaciers with thermal fluids creates fissures that allow for resource extraction. I like the asteroid tracking option. Let's do that one. Incoming transmission. Daggers talk. Money howls. From a non-aggression pact with the Klingon, form a non-aggression pact with the Klingon Empire. We will be unable to attack each other while this is in effect. Non-aggression with both the Romulans and the Klingons. What the heck is happening in this game? I mean, I would expect that in this time period with the Klingons, but the Romulans. Recruit Alina Necheyev, a promising Starfleet officer. Oh, isn't she one of the admirals we saw in the show? Oh, that's cool. A veteran of many important missions, she her record indicates they are a quick thinker who will perform admirably on and off the field. Her previous crewmates all attest they are an asset to the Federation. Recruit now. I vaguely remember her. I've seen The Next Generation a lot more recently than I've seen the original series. I've seen all of Star Trek. That's more. Except for, you know, the original series and uh, the animated series, which I've never actually watched that. I need to get on that one of these days. Okay, what's this? This is the USS Sentinel. What are they doing? They're surveying. Let's not interrupt. Wasn't interested in it. I don't know. Oh, uh, the Lionheart is back. We want to go here. Neural Root Network. Complex electrical signals were detected in the root systems of the old growth forests of Vulcan, though many of these thinking trees were already cut down before the discovery. Legislation was quickly passed to prevent their further destruction. The people of Vulcan report sensations of deep calmness and serenity walking among the planet's remaining old growth forests, all of which are now designated planetary parks. No more missing vehicles or vandalized logging equipment have been found. We will continue to study these trees far into the future. That's a heck of a unity boost. Okay, let's research anomalies. Discovery logged. The surface of M Melia 3A features unusual energy deposits left over from a recent heavy bombardment of tachyons. We may be dealing with a temporal aberration. Routine. Let's research it. Incoming transmission. The Silver Sides is missing again? It, wait, is that... Oh, my God. Jolan True. Migration Treaty with the Romulans? What is going on? Populations will freely migrate between... Oh, my God. Okay, I have to see how this goes. That's wild. I can't believe they of all empires would propose that. <coughs> what is going on with the silver sides? Oh, that was not the same ship. Never mind. We found an Elarian shelter survivor on Melia 3A, though no signs of life were detected. While researching the surrounding cave for energy deposits, we discovered a painting of a beast with golden eyes and gargantuan wings. The cave painting depicted a mythical creature from Elarian children's stories known as the Tarkasian Razor Beast. Though simplistic, the painting appeared to have been made with great care, suggesting this particular Razor Beast was someone's imaginary friend. This is starting to sound awfully familiar. Scans reveal Melia 3A was recently intersected by the Nexus. This temporal gateway was is the reason for the energy deposits and well and where the El Aryan refugees went. 
they are likely still there, enjoying new lives of infinite possibility in the extra-dimensional paradise. The Romulans are actually the Dominion. <laughs> maybe this is like with Baldur's Gate 3 and they made an oops, maybe, maybe. A Xeno-archaeological study will be conducted to learn more about the Elarian people. Yes. Okay. Let's get out there and explore a bit more. Broken Curlin Ice Ghost. In the rubble of the Curlin ruins on Kualta or, or Katala 2, our away team found a 5th dynasty Nice Ghost. The ceremony... The... I can't speak today, I swear, guys. The ceramic figurine is incomplete with many of its components missing or damaged. Even so, such an archaeological find is considered uncommon. Elarians will never be important to Star Trek. <laughs> The silent alarm has been triggered in Seoul. What? Discovery logged. World of Eclipses. The position of Mela Malila. Oh, it's Malila. 8A in relation to its neighboring planets casts a unique unending eclipse on its surface. finished on schedule. Mining station of Epsilon City BB. Soul needs things done if there are silent alarms happening. Yeah, uh... I wish I had we any kind of an inkling star of what that actually means. Where no one has gone before. Oh! Where no one has gone before. Okay. A new tradition to teach us more about ourselves. You have completed your first mission tree node where no one has gone before. Ends the tutorial, Mission Tree Event Chain. Boldly go, sir. Thank you very much, Captain Picard. Means a lot coming from you. But now, what are we working towards next? Understand the unknown. Overlapping eclipses cape keep Malila... 8A locked in a perpetual shadow. The rock strata of this barren world reveal it was once a water planet before its oceans evaporated. Its towering mountains hold some of the richest mineral veins we have ever seen. Incomprehensible glyphs are carved on the sides of these mountains, time smoothed and vague with age. Yet we can find no signs of those who carved them. We must dig. Uh, nope. No, we're not going to dig it. Okay, so we have to research two more anomalies to finish Understand the Unknown. And for the Enterprise, Anomaly. we need more alloys. And the event space, the final frontier, happens if we do. The time has come for a new flagship to lead Starfleet's endeavors. The USS Enterprise D recently passed its shakedown voyage from the Utopia Planitia Fleet Yard. It will be the fifth vessel to bear this name and will be helmed by the decorated Captain Jean-Luc Picard. So we need alloys. We we need alloys pretty badly. Okay, what's going on? Model. Defensive Jalan pact invitation. Shrew. Wow. Okay. 
we're defensive pact with the Romulan Empire. New technology has passed testing protocols. Unsynthesized food center. I can only suggest that you have someone look around for what could be trying to be silent. That's not a bad idea. Prosperity Accords, Interplanetary Study Programs. I think we'd better get some additional administrative capacity, though. So let's do that. And we, we can get... a new star system. It, it's exactly like Stellaris. Something's Research always model. happening. See? Uh, whether it be lurking in the we shadows or... communications with another civilization. At least, these signals appear to be sentient in origin. To formally engage in first contact procedures, we must assign an envoy. A universal translator may be required. What about second contact? Do we have the California class on standby? Meeting a new civilization can be a delicate matter. First contact is made when we cross paths with an unknown species for the first time. Envoys are sent out to complete the process on behalf of our people. The time it takes to complete a first contact process depends on our envoy's skill set, how willing both parties are to open communications with each other, and a degree of chance. Okay. How shall we treat them? The Federation is composed of many different species whose membership guarantees their dignity, legal equality, and access to our shared body of scientific knowledge. Being part of our Federation entails we must do everything in our power to resolve disagreements peacefully and in a way that maximizes mutual benefit for all parties. Yet, despite our commitment to these principles, we have never faced greater uncertainty about the future. The realities of the Kinemer incident have forced a difficult choice upon us. How will we regard new species who wish to join us? As trusted members, all who come here will be granted the full rights of citizenship. Change species profile in the United Federation of Planets. All who come here may earn the privileges of full citizenship in time. No. We, we will be trusting. Now, societal studies. Whether it be lurking in the shadows or hidden in plain sight, the art of becoming unseen takes time and tact to develop. The road to insight is but a waiting game. Okay, so that gives us spy benefits. And then we've also got empiricism, which we're going to do. Yes. Tradition accepted. I'm waiting for an accidental infestation of Tribbles or Moopsies. Oh my god. The Federation was built on the foundation of mutual trust and progress. Even in this post kinemer era, when so much is uncertain, we must not lose the values that make us who we are. No matter what new dynamics arise in the wake of this tragedy, we must remain optimistic about the future. We will continue to believe other civilizations are acting in good faith, and that our galaxy is a place full of awe-inspiring wonders just waiting to be discovered. I'm going to take the unity option. The Federation was built over many centuries by countless individuals who dedicated their lives to creating a better future. We will honor their dream. <laughs> oh my god, Aaron R., yes. Combat computers. Cutting beam. Energy from mining stations. I think we're going combat computers. First contact investigation locked. First contact in the Cameron Vortex system. We have come across a fellow spacefaring civilization in the Cameron Vortex system. We are attempting to establish a formal line of communication with them in the hopes that it will be mutually beneficial. Federation News Bulletin. I swear. Through hard work and experience, scientist Lorak has developed new skills. Lorak gains the Wonderstruck Society trait, granting the following effects. Anomaly research speed boost. Research speed boost for new worlds. New civilization. True alliances are formed on the basis of trust and willingness to share. Let's hear what they have to say. Starts the first process contact uh, proce first contact process with the new civilization. Make a show of hospitality. Send over a care package to mark our first encounter. Call it a display of our culture and good intentions. So we gain unity, or we gain research. We're gaining research. Stage 1. Assign an envoy to investigate. 
We have come across a fellow spacefaring civilization in the Cameron Vortex system. We're attempting to establish a formal line of communication with them in the hopes that it will be mutually beneficial. Envoys are our actors abroad. They can be assigned to make first contact with other civilizations or to engage in diplomacy with those we have already established communications with. I'm going to have to rewatch that episode now, Aaron Laura. I just watched the, uh, the most recent one before I started stream tonight. John Mercer or Narg? I think we're going to go with Mr. Mercer. No chance of a breakthrough. I haven't seen today's episode yet, but I've seen that I have no bones and I must flee episode three times. I just need to rewatch the whole series. Jolan True. A share warp agreement? We can now reach further into the uncatalogued areas of the galaxy. There are things, I'm sure there are. We do not yet know how these aliens will respond to our contact. Research model. New technology has passed testing protocols. Asteroid cracking. Starbase building minefield generator. Uh, let's get deuterium from mining stations, actually. Difficulty five, three insights, no skill bonus, sadly. A leader has gained a level. Okay, a silent alarm is triggered. Oh, you know what, that's probably, it's probably a spy. Let's build another spy. Oh. Despite recent skill improvements owed to accumulated experience, scientist Joe Akabi seems to be approaching the limits of his abilities. Complacent trait, okay. That's unfortunate, but what can you do? Oh, I can't build a spy ship? Let's recall our spy ship. Counter espionage. Um, no, 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 Lionheart, no orders, what are you doing? Survey system, and there's a special project, battle site. Excellent, okay guys, um, it also looks as if my break is about to start. So I'm gonna go for about three and a half to five minutes. If you need to get up, grab some food or a drink or a snack, this is a really good time to do it. I'm gonna be running some clips. So if you do have to watch ads, first of all, thank you. And second of all, you won't be missing anything. So I'll be right back. Do, do that. What's Nothing. the meaning of this interruption? Jarl Balgraf is not receiving visitors. I have news from Helgen. Oh my God. Thank you, Greeny. Well, that explains why the guards let you in. Come on then, the Jarl will want to speak to you personally. No, I'm <laughs> that was not the Jarl's cheese. Stop right there. Thousand year flood. The river bursts its banks and rising water covers the land for miles around. Not for a thousand years has the river flooded to such an extent. Traffic simulation is a tough nut to crack though for a game that has to track so much else at the same time. That doesn't look scary at all. 
I expect there's going to be zero problems with this. This is fine. This is going to be totally okay. Surely this can't be a good idea. No kidding. Oh, we have a thing. You don't scare me. Ah. Oh god. Oh god. Back. Oh, you dumb fuck. Jesus. Oh my god. Fuck. <laughs> uh. Excuse me, your head is buried inside the floor. I don't know if you're aware of this. Uh oh. As we begin this chapter of our story, we find you, Roger, Ace Janitor, doing what you do best. This one here, southwest of me, that is the Beta Z Empire. There are friends. Also, I'm back. Just in case you had not picked up on that yet. Thank you, Aaron, Lauren, and Sarah. Okay. Oh, no orders? Let's explore here. Chicago. Thank you, Callan Rain. <clears throat> We will do our best to understand you. Enter into a protection pact with the Betazoid houses. Galactic tension changed by minus three. I wish it gave you a description of what exactly a protection pact entails, but okay. I like them, so we will do that. Uh, how are we doing on resources? So I should really be keeping my construction chips a lot more busy, I we think. We have surveyed a new star system. Excellent. System surveyed. We will do our best to understand you. That was a very quick pact. What the heck? That's weird. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, how do I cancel that? This is the mission log, our main center of operations where important briefings are stored. 
military ship in orbit and a science ship in orbit. Okay, in that case, um, just move there. Let's build a military ship. Miranda. Where's the ship designer? The ship designer is where we can engineer our starships with specific modules. This process is automated by default, but can also be done manually. Note that due to the difference in size between various classes of starships, the number of modules available for each one can change dramatically. Okay. Miranda class, Miranda design. Okay, the terminology in this game is a little weird, but what the heck? Jessica coming in with the raid. How are you doing, Jessica? It's wonderful to see you. Welcome, catch up raiders. How are you doing, Bakikio? <laughs> Red alert number one. My son has awoken in quite a state, so I must activate lurk mode. No worries. Get that cloaking device engaged. I will hopefully see you again soon. It was great having you here. Jessica, what's going on? It's Oh, how's your Baldur's Gate 3 playthrough going? Without getting spoilery, please let me know how everything is going there. Just hyper-focusing on Baldur's Gate? Good to hear. I will be getting back to that soon. We're nowhere near done with that. I'm getting to the point where I want more variety in my gaming again. But, uh, yeah, we're going to be making some progress in that. Uh, so welcome, welcome Raiders. Ma please, everyone, make sure you go and follow Jessica. She's a wonderful streamer and great friend of the channel, and you will not regret any time you spend with her. If you are new here in the channel, my name is Gord McLeod. I'm a variety streamer here on Twitch. I play a wide variety of mostly single-player story-driven games with excellent character and narrative development, as well as... Oh, thank you so much for the follow. I really appreciate that. As well as... Uh, classic adventure game, strategy game, sandboxy games, and the occasional Lego build as well for good measure. So if any of that sounds good, please feel free to hit the follow button, and I do have a little bit of a video to welcome you in properly. Hopefully it won't scare too many of you away. Welcome on in, folks. Let's get the stream started, shall we? Whoa! Oh, crap. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, uh, runaway helicopter. Oh, damn it. Oh, no. No, no, no. No, no. Oh, shoot. 69 form factor. Aspect ratio. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, crap. Whoa. Yes. Whoa. <laughs> okay, that... Hey, I have not, I have not looted that, sir. That's a little bit of a preview of what you can expect around here. Thank you again so much, Jessica. It's always such a treat to have you here. Okay, so we are playing some Star Trek Infinite tonight, which is a very Stellaris-based game. 
by the same publisher. It's another Paradox game, same as Dolores. But it's by the developers who actually did the most recent uh, Master of Orion game. So there's a lot of good pedigree here in this title. And so far, I'm really, really enjoying it. So it just came out today, or uh, technically in my time zone. It was actually yesterday. And I'm really, really enjoying it. And we're just taking a quick look at custom ship designs. So I'm looking at building another Miranda, although we don't have to call it that. Auto design takes control over upgrading and changing of these ships. Okay, I don't want to... Let, let's take a look at auto best. Small plasma charge. Okay, so these are weapons. Small phaser auto cannon. Burst phaser. No, I can't do... Can I? Yeah, I can. Okay. Small titanium hull. Reactor sub battery. Small fusion reactor, warp drive, small advanced impulse engine, sensor probes, duotronic computer escort. Advanced enough computers can be thought of as other valuable members of the officer complement. Interceptor, stay in formation protecting the fleet while targeting medium ships. Escort, stay in formation protecting the fleet while targeting smaller ships. Okay. Sensor probes. No options there. More developed impulse engines produce greater amounts of energy, allowing for speeds comparable to warp. I'm not sure I buy that, but okay. Laser cannon. Burst phaser. Defense shields. Hey, Jarek, how's it going? Cannot make change. What is... Ugh. Oh. Auto... No, okay. Auto, that's why. <laughs> Alexandria! That's the name of my starship in Starship Tart Trek Online. Having fun with a mistake? How so? Sentinel Resolute. We'll go with the Resolute. Let's build a Resolute. Why is it still called a Miranda? Oh, I guess it's Miranda class, so that's okay. Oh, got back into Valheim. Good luck with that. Uh, let's see. Construction ships are still doing construction stuff. Silver sides, what are you up to? Where are you? You're out here? 
Let's get you over this way. Survey that, please. Lionheart, you're down here. We need you to stay where you are. Spy ship, you keep doing what you're doing. Yes, indeed it is, Jarg. Construction finished on schedule. Yes. Mining stations on Regulus, please. Leader has gained a level. First contact event pending. We are playing as the United Federation of Planets. And uh, we're just trying to see how things go. We've got the Betazoid houses down here. The Cardassians are up here. Romulans are here. This is the Federation Romulan neutral zone which weirdly does not yeah, extend over there. Well. We've established the colony Wolf 359 Prime in the Wolf 359 system. They will certainly never experience any problems in the future. Our settlers have finished colonizing a new planet. And the Klingons are out this way. Federation News Bulletin. The discovery of new planets entails a necessary resettlement of our people who will go on to form new societies on new worlds. Planets that we own require us to populate them with pops so they can occupy jobs, which in turn will produce the resources we need to accomplish our goals. However, resettlement also comes with a cost that varies per pop. Though pops can be resettled manually, this might always not always be possible due to factors such as species rights, lack of resources, or other circumstances. The drop-down menu on the resettlement window will also provide you with useful information on colonies. Go ahead and resettle a pop. Hey, Nixus, how's it going? Um, resettlement. We have surveyed a new star system. Excellent. So it's mostly human, but we've got some Andorian and Tellarite as well. Hey, Super Bowser, how's it going? Just woke up, it's nice weather and got good sleep. Also, rest of the week is free. Excellent, that sounds great. Uh, actually, let's take a look at Wolf 359 again. Where's Prime? So, do you have any plans for your free time? A new tradition to teach us more about ourselves. Thirks produce trade value and amenities. Holding cells. Let's do a housing quarter. Okay. Construction ship. USS Sentinel, let's get out here. mission tree looking. Ah, uh, we need 3.5k. Okay. I 
actually, you know what? Oh. Well. That's fine. To watch Twitch, YouTube, investing podcasts, make images with AI and upload them, play Reactor mobile games. Sounds like a plan to me. That Research sounds really model. good. New technology has passed testing protocols. All right. General level cap plus one. Increased recruitable generals cap plus one. Scientist level cap plus one. Pop growth speed. Let's do adaptive tests. Traditions available. I guess we're doing societal studies, and then that'll finish off the research one entirely. Tradition accepted. Five of five. We are receiving a message from the Qatarian Enclave. They have used their own set of first contact protocols to communicate with us. Transmission un incoming. On screen. I'm glad to see that the United Federation of Planets finally made contact. Dignitary Tenera sends their deepest and sincerest regards. I am part of the Qatarian diplomatic delegation, but I must say these protocol pleasantries feel so shallow. I always find it easier to get to know someone while playing a game and drinking a glass of Qatarian Merlot. Care to join? We are pleased to meet you. Our first contact process with the new civilization has been aborted as they have established communications with us. Okay. We can now use the territorial reparations cast's belly against the Qatarian enclave. A new ascension perk to aid our progress. At least one of your planets has low stability. Ah, that's Wolf 359. That's new, so that's not really all that surprising. We have surveyed a new star system. Defense or conquest? Let's adopt this. Customizable living spaces. Oh, we don't have any welfare traditions. We have lost a true federation. What? The Klingon Empire Narendra three. Construction finished on schedule. Rude. Discovery logged. Research it. Okay, we can't do anything right now. What happened at Wolf three five nine? We've received a priority report from our colony on Wolf 359 Prime. The colony is entirely inhabited by a hearing-impaired community in an effort to conduct a series of research projects, including, including a thorough study on systems of nonverbal communication. One of the projects being carried out by the colonists focuses on a species of boreal birds native to the Wolf 359 Prime that display a seemingly random pattern in the coloration of their feathers. The group's most recent findings mentioned that the specimens started displaying behaviors associated with chronic distress when placed in captivity. When taking field notes on the bird's habitat, the colonists also reported sensing strange vibrations coming from all directions. When a visiting team of xenoornithologists arrived on Wolf 359 Prime the next day, they discovered that the bird's erratic behavior was due to a fault in the prefabricated habitat. The environment conceals loudspeakers in its framework that simulate the sounds of the habitat it attempts to replicate but they've been left on maintenance mode by its makers since the habitat was erected, emitting a high-pitched sound that went undetected by our colonists, but greatly affected the birds. Update the structures. Research modeled. Okay. System surveyed. Good. Election. Uh, okay. Construction complete. We're fine here. Engineering research. Ascension perk. We can't really do that right now. Oh, maybe we can actually. I'll look at that in a minute. Need to get up early suddenly, so I need to get, head to sleep. Yeah, no problem, Aranor. Have a good night. It's chromatic vortex. 
Upon beaming aboard the shuttle in orbit around Sinlorn 2, our away team was greeted by a group of transparent humanoid life forms guarding what seemed to be a dormant chromatic vortex. Scans indicate that the vortex is composed of remnant triolic energy that has distorted the space-time continuum. The distortion has created colorful, a colorful portal to an alternate dimension, but it is quickly closing. The lifeforms communicate with our away team telepathically, reporting that they are travelers from the alternate dimension who have run out of energy to keep their gateway open. Despite being technologically advanced, the lifeforms are nonetheless stuck in our galaxy, and their future depends on the USS Sentinel. Resupply the Vortex. Re-energizing the Vortex is costly, but the respect and experience earned might make it worthwhile. Okay, we'll see what happens. Ooh, unlike unlocks ship type intrepid? Yes, we're doing that. We have lost a true Federation hero. A new ruler has been elected. President Lorak will rule until the next election, which will take place at that start date. And now we suddenly no longer have Oh, a leader is retiring. To Prague has retired. We wish them well. But now we need a new physics person. Um, let's see. Distri uh, research speed and military theory. Research speed void craft. <laughs> that still cracks me up. State craft. And industry. I think this guy is going to be uh, Mr. Brenner's the one to go Federation with. Federation News Bulletin. Okay. Uh, Ascension, Ascension perks. Ascension perks are the culminations of our traditions. Bonuses that impart significant benefits connected to the tradition tree that unlocks them. A new Ascension perk slot is unlocked with each tradition tree we complete. Some may also require the discovery of certain technologies. Understood. Discovery logged. I wish it would pause and let me deal with what I'm dealing with before it goes on. I had the same problem with, uh, with Stellaris. Curlin Archaeology. Orbital scans of Sinorn B1 have detected the presence of an abundance of Curlin ruins. This civilization went extinct millennia ago, making archaeological finds rare, but it it's worth a shot. Okay, this is just routine, so let's go on and research it. Okay. Pause. Political theatrics. Power passes to those who have internalized the art of pomp and circumstance, but does power pass to one or through one? Does a tyrant ever know the cost of their crown before it is paid? Unification. We are more alike than we are different. The rifts in our culture have ceased to divide us as they once did. In this new era, all are forced to confront the reality that we are one galactic people among many. The greatest inheritance. We stand on the shoulders of giants. The limitless possibilities of the present are a gift from those who came before. We would be fools to squander such immeasurable fortune. Functioning bureaucracy. Oh, we've got options. Societal trust is at an all-time high. Hard work and ingenuity are inherent to the meticulous structure of our government organs, governmental organs. The results speak for themselves. Spirit of the times. When we work together to achieve a dream we all share, nothing in the universe can stand in our way. Hours for the taking. Natural resources exist for our use. From the moment our first ancestors climbed from the primordial soup, we created tools to control and mold the forces of the universe to our benefit. There is no shame in pragmatism. Efficient consumption. It's easy to forget moderation in a new age of limitless material consumption, but we must remember that even endless synthesized goods create their own galactic waste. Bread for command. Holy me, God, so many options. The pedigree of our military is unmatched. Our rivals simply cannot field leaders with this much intuition, intelligence, and bravado. Diplomatic solutions. Violence is a last resort. Most conflicts can be resolved by weighing the evidence presented by both sides and agreeing upon a reasonable outcome. Self-defense. Peace comes at a price. Our weapons were not created with aggression in mind, but if our hand is forced, we will strike to ensure the protection of our people. Pursuit of happiness. The well-being of our members is a core pillar we must never lose sight of. Merriment, leisure, and the privilege to enjoy the time we have is what makes life worth living. I'm kind of leaning towards unification. Unification. 
This is a watershed moment for the Federation. Okay. I wonder if we, I wonder if we can speaking of unification, can we reunite the Vulcans and the Romulans? That would be pretty amazing. Uh Chicago, what are you up to? Where are you? Okay, you're hanging out on Regulus. We still need more mining stations in Beta Pende. Construction finished on schedule. Excellent. Curie. We have lost a true Federation hero. Oh, what happened? Oh, no, that was not it. Who did we lose? What happened? There's no notification. Oh, hang on. What's the second fleet? What's going on here? Intact Curlin... Oh. The investigating crew of the USS Sentinel did not disappoint in their search for Curlin artifacts. Searching through the ruins on Silorn B-1, one of our Xenoarchaeologists discovered an intact third dynasty, Curlin Nyskos, and managed to carefully pry it free from the rubble. The ceramic figurine statue is over 12,000 years old and incredibly rare. Okay. Pause, please. Second Fleet. Resolute Design. Okay. Uh, Nechev. Let's get you in charge of this, and we need you... down here. You can sort of do that, Jarig. I mean, you would still be playing the United Federation of Planets, but you are not limited to playing them the way that the shows depict them. You can veer off canon and do things like turn the Federation into a more of a dictatorial power. You can't turn them into a mirror image of, like, the Klingon Empire. They're designed very differently, but you can do a lot of stuff like that. And plus, this is another Paradox game, so you know there's going to be tons and tons of expansions, and I would be shocked if there isn't some sort of Mirror Universe expansion and all that other stuff as well. Silent Alarm triggered in Seoul. Spy Ship. What do you mean, no orders? Counter espionage. Our colony on Wolf 359 Prime has reached a breakthrough both with their nonverbal communication study and on the Boreal Bird Project. The colony's sem se semiologists have devised a new system of light patterns and symbols that greatly reduces the time required to communicate with species that have languages di drastically different from our own but are similar in visual capacity. The xenoornithologists, on the other hand, have found the subtle pattern in the coloration of the animal's feathers to be indicative of the bird's capacity to absorb subspace radiation and detect gravitational anomalies. We could give priority to either project at the moment. Fluent communication is key to survival. Biodiversity still holds so many secrets. Xenoornithology modifier added giving the following effects. Anomaly discovery chance. Let's do that one. Spy detected. Unfortunately, our spies were unsuccessful in their attempts to infiltrate the planet belonging to the system. Belonging to the... in the system. <laughs> we must make sure that none of our crew members have been compromised in the process. The Federation Starbase is under attack. What? We can complete a mission. Understand the unknown. We have surveyed a new star system. Okay. Uh, we still need more alloys, alloys before we can build the Enterprise, unfortunately. 
Where, what, what is, where's this attack? What's going on? Shouldn't that be a bigger deal? Where are we being attacked? And who is attacking us? The site of a vicious skirmish has been discovered in the Zyrodak system. Our scans indicate the presence of metallic debris that could provide us with answers. Uh, do we not have the necessary ships? What's going on? Go there. And go there. And the Earth Romulan War, <clears throat> I would be shocked if they schedule. don't include time period expansions so that you can do exactly stuff like that, Jarek. Right now, this is set in the time period of the Kittimer Massacre and the after effects. Silaran system is finished. Curie completed construction of a research station. Okay. Okay, now we can do the research there. Scene of the battle. Our away team is now surveying the site where the USS Lionheart was attacked by an unidentifiable alloy structure. The vast rectangular sections of wreckage that lie here match our reports from previous attacks by a similar vessel. A vicious skirmish does appear to have taken place here. The ruined sections of hull, if it can be called that, bear intense phaser scarring. Though much of the structure was vaporized in a massive explosion, the sheer size proves the crew of the USS Lionheart was fortunate to flee with their lives. Several intact stasis pods fit for humanoid-sized life forms were found amidst the wreckage, but we have found neither survivors nor any remains as if whoever crewed this object simply vanished after losing a fight along with their dead. We will reverse engineer the vessel to learn about the fate of the USS Lionheart? Wait, did I lose my ship? I, I think they need somebody to go through these descriptions, because I still have the Lionheart. The crew of the ship that recently went missing in action after being attacked by the giant structure has finished debriefing. The survivors report that the structure drew their ship in with a tractor beam, but they managed to escape using an unexpected maneuver that combined the gravitational pull of a nearby moon with a subspace distortion created by overloading the warp engine. This maneuver will henceforth be known as Hillary Singh's Gambit. The hostile vessel only began following our ship after scanning and taking an interest in our technology. Its weapons, far more powerful than our own, are said to emit an unmistakable emerald green radiance. We must tread cautiously. Okay, so there was a problem, but we managed to come out of it okay. That's, that's my takeaway here. Okay, Cylorn is done, so let's go survey over here. You can survey over here. I think I'm gonna send you guys to the Wolf 359 system. Although we're probably gonna need more ships because it's not much of a fleet. Now, how's... I think this one is finished scanning. Ooh! Kataria, unsurveyed system. Hmm. 
nimble. Get that last research or uh, mining station done in Earth. Hey, Voidum, how's it going? It's good to see you. Construction finished on schedule. Chicago completed construction of a mining station at Ruripente. In a mirror darkly, yeah. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. And we've got 3k alloys, which is awesome. Because once we hit 3.5, we can build the Enterprise. Okay, upgrading outposts, turns out, that costs alloys. I should probably be careful about that. New technology has passed testing protocols. Isolinear circuitry. Equipping optical chips with isolinear circuitry upgrades duotronic computers to isolinear computers. <clears throat> Linked burst phaser. Plasma gun. Construction finished on schedule. Let's upgrade mining stations. Research model. Research station on Titan. New technology. Federation new testing Bulletin. protocols. Hillary Singh has developed new skills. Construction finished on schedule. World Capital, Courts of Judgment. On schedule. Medical clinics are pretty important. Let's do that. Okay. We have lost a true Federation hero. Ugh. All right. Research stations. Mining stations. Mining stations. Sentinel needs orders. Where are you, Sentinel? You're over here. Let's go here. Survey that system. One of these days I need to figure out the difference between survey system and explore system. Lionheart is surveying this system. I think we'll send them on an exploratory mission next. Discovery locked. Holodeck Pocket Dimension. During sh oh, hang on. Let's pause. During shore leave on Thendaran B, a routine sparring exercise in one of our science ship's holodecks led an ensign of ours to happen on a growing pocket dimension created by a tear in the hologrid. I hate it when that happens. Silent alarm triggered. Low stability. A Federation star base is under attack. Where? What? Phasers at full power. Okay, pause. Who are the freaking attackers? 
I don't see anybody. Oh, the first fleet has no leader. Combat action successful. Last to show up. A new star system. Don't have enough resources. Okay. Well, we're doing okay so far as is. Um, who needs orders? Silver sides needs orders. We'll explore this. Scanning. Oh. No, okay, it's paused. Scanning the rift caused in the hollow grip, the hollow dex grid, it has become clear that the omnidirectional holographic diodes have given way to reveal a concentrate of altered hollow matter. With a high number of manipulated photons in the expanding tear, all illusion of substance has dissipated, leaving behind only true matter. A physicist aboard the ship has tentatively called the rift a new kind of hollow dimension, believing it to be much more than a pocket in the universe. Eerie, the ensign should alert the captain. Analyze the hollow dimension. A hollow dimension could hold wonders unknown. Sounds like a plan to me. What was first thought to be a growing pocket dimension caused by a tear in the grid of one of the USS Lionheart's hollow decks is found to be was found to be an apple-sized micro-dimensional portal caused by an abnormality in space-time. Our crew has discovered that it leads to a most fascinating aquatic world composed of ocean and air only. Analyzing its properties, our scientists noticed that the salty sea water splashing in from the portal could not exist for long in our holodeck, dissipating when beyond its threshold. Accessing the world proved impossible, but our scientists discovered that the portal works much like a spyglass peering into this other dimension. Although this portal will one day close, for now we will use it to conduct research on the aquatic world. In the meantime, we have opened another holodeck in an unused ready room. The wonders of the universe never cease to amaze us. Construction finished on schedule. Astra Coal system has been fully surveyed. Construction finished on schedule. Oh, building outpost requires. Uh, okay. I don't we want to expand too fast then. System. Okay, Vendaren is done. Construction finished on schedule. Okay. I'm starting to see a few things here. That are good to We've know. detected a non Federation vessel. Okay. First contact in the Obra Duran system. We've come across a fellow spacefaring civilization in the Obra Duran system. We're attempting to establish a formal line of communication with them in the hopes that it will be mutually beneficial. Open hailing frequencies. Mercer, you have experience. Construction finished on schedule. Excellent.
We have surveyed a new star system. Perfect. Uh, which one was that? Rondores. So now I'm not certain what the point of the explorer option is. Thank you so much for the follow. I really appreciate that. Welcome on in. So how's everybody doing tonight? I hope you've all had a fantastic week we so far. We will do far. our best to understand you. Protection pack with the Betazoid houses. Yes, please. Oh, neutral fleets. Okay. Okay. Forced to return to Wolf 359 from Japar because it is within the borders? What? Construction finished on schedule. Oh, they colonized it. Okay. I see. Well, that sucks, but okay. Fair enough. Um, we're back to 3K. I'm going to build an outpost here just because I really want that system. It's right in my natural borders, and I don't want the Klingons taking it. Here, no orders. We've detected a non Federation vessel. First contact. Our goal is to bring as many warp capable species as we can into the Federation. Of Under the shared values of peace, equality, universal rights, and scientific discovery, though we must uphold the prime directive. Helping hand modifier added for 40 years, giving the following effects. Envoy improved relations plus 20%. Okay. That opens up established trade routes and multilateral accords once we've completed these. It looks like we're already really close to multilateral accords. We need one more commercial pact and one more research agreement. And trade routes, all we need is trade annex built-in star bases. I gotta hurry up and build the Enterprise then so that I can really work on my star base network. I've only got one trade annex. I don't even know if I have six star bases. Scientist Davern is leveled up, made first contact with an unknown entity. Narg, you're up. A new tradition to teach us more about ourselves. Okay, now what can we do? Construction finished on schedule. In an age of weapons that can annihilate star systems, peace is a matter of superior firepower. We Federation have lost a true Federation hero. Oh my god. 
Noted. Yes. Tradition accepted. Research. Also, two and a half minute warning, guys. We have a break coming up in two and a half minutes. Computer assisted targeting. Curie, where are you? Okay. Chicago. I wonder, I have this bad habit of neglecting my existing planets. Let's take a look at Earth. Yeah, I can build more stuff. I want more alloys. Let's see if there's a facility I can build on Earth that would give me more alloy production. I'm not seeing anything in particular. Oh, forges. Construction in progress. Oh, except, wait a minute. Uh, okay. Starfleet Academy, Planetary Administration, Research Laboratories, Replicator, we're about to get forges. Let's do a military base. Okay. Oh, actually, ads are starting soon. So, if you guys need to get up and grab some food or drink or a snack, this is a very good time to do it. I'm going to take a few minutes, just three and a half to five. I'm going to run some clips. So, if you do have to add, watch ads, first of all, thank you. And second of all, you won't be missing anything. So, I'll be right back. Holy crap, that was... That might not have hit anything yet. Although, I'm kind of wondering how far that wave might maintain its height. That bridge could be in trouble. Um, but... That was impressive as hell. Good shot. Uh, Ooh. I'm hit. My mech is coming apart around me. I stand corrected. Damn. What in the world?
this is why you got to be very careful tossing pebbles into wells. You might accidentally create a volcano. That's made of wood. It should float. I can't reach that from here. 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 Well, crap. How about a swordfish? I guess I'll be needing a sword. This one will do. <laughs> so you can just pick up the anchor well, and walk that away. Wasn't so hard. <laughs> it feels too much like this is finished. It's not at all finished. I've still got so much more to do. But. It's coming along so nicely. I really like what is happening with this place. How do you like the new shell? It's sleek. Can't wait to use the welder. Speaking of... You be of... careful with that thing. If I want you to use it, I'll tell you. Exterminate! Exterminate! Oh my god. And cut that out! Wow. <laughs> okay, I am back. That was uh, most likely. It really should be the very last break of this evening. Oh, interesting. You know, I probably should explore these highway notes, shouldn't I? We have surveyed a new star system. Okay, let's pause. Orbital scans of Humtak 6 have detected the presence of an abundance of Kerlin ruins. This civilization went extinct millennia ago, making archaeological finds rare, but it's worth a shot. Research. Where is Starbase? Oh, hang on. What's this? First contact event pending. Low stability. System surveyed. All right. Um, shipyard. Right. I can't just build another. Okay. Fine. Let's get another. Oh, maybe not that many, actually. Uh, that's going to cost us alloys as well. But we'll build two more. Construction finished on schedule. Unfortunately, the Kerlin ruins on Humtak 6 are very damaged. Nonetheless, we have dug up a number of shattered 5th Dynasty pots and vases. Depending on who you ask, the value of such finds ranges from interesting to negligible. Starfleet vessels improved. First fleet has been fully upgraded. Research model. New technology has passed testing protocols. Medical clinics, excellent. Okay, so this is society research. Interplanetary study programs. We can get more envoys. Genetic sequencing. Oh. 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 Spock. Recruit Spock. 
A promising Starfleet officer named Spock has been nominated for promotion. A veteran of many important missions, Spock's record indicates they are a quick thinker who will perform admirably on and off the field. Spock's previous crewmates all attest they are an asset to the Federation. Well, should we recruit Mr. Spock? I think we're going to recruit Spock now. Scientist Spock has developed new skills. I should think so. Automated politics. Let's do that. Anything to get people out of politics. Mining station. I'm running out of stuff to do. Uh, oh, Lionheart. Go there. We've detected a non-Federation vessel. We have surveyed a new star system. Busy star investigating. Star vessels improved. Okay, we can't do that. Second fleet, I need you back at Wolf. Construction finished on schedule. Who never takes someone called Spock seriously? He'll never amount to anything. You might be right. I don't know what I was thinking. Oh, wait. Did I just take the first and second fleets and send them? I didn't want to do that. Where's the first fleet? Oh, they need a leader. Um... Oh great, they're they're linked. Okay, we're just gonna leave them all at Earth. It's fine. Construction finished on schedule. Okay, good. Good. Now. Enter, wait. No, they're already done that. How do I use it? Does seem pretty fast. Research model. New technology has passed testing protocols. Intrepid. Ooh. Okay. So that was engineering. Minefield generator for star bases. Dilithium from mining stations plus 25%. That might be a good one to get. Photon torpedoes. Actually, I think we're going to go with that one. But, now, hang on. That seems a little out of sequence to me. We don't even have the Galaxy class and we've already got the Intrepid class. What the heck? Intrepid Nova design. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, that's not what we want, actually. We want the ship designer.
medium fusion reactor, warp drive. The Intrepid is slightly earlier than the galaxy. I don't think it is. I think it came later. The Intrepid design, that's the one that's got all the neural gel packs and all that stuff. Isolinear computer. gonna have to do. Ah, oh, I've got, yes, silver sides. Let's get you over here too and we're gonna try going this away. Except how do I, where's the other end of this one? Oh, it's probably over here. Oh, foo. That might not be the best. Um, we should maybe colonize Mars. Twenty-six years older than Intrepid? Well, I mean, twenty-six years is a fair gap. Construction finished on schedule. It might have been faster just to go this way. Oh well, that's okay. Three five nine. I've got a colony here, right? Prime, where are you? Let's build an agricultural district and a mining district. And another agricultural district. Oh, we can do quite a few, okay. Hey, Hammer, how's it going? We made it, okay. How's your week going, Hammer? It's really good to see you. I hope all is well. We have surveyed a new star system. Highway node. Interesting.
Oh. Okay, we made it. Silver Sides is here. Let's see if this is the destination. It looks like it is. Silent alarm triggered in Seoul. This highway system seems pretty extensive. That's really interesting. Oh, colony ship. Uh, okay, there was a... Where do I... Planets management. Is this it? Where was the one that I automatically deal with colonization? Doing well. Also installed this game yesterday. Only played the tutorial so far. I'm having a good time with it. Oh, it's got to be this one. Got to be this one. Didn't have Ryza already? Oh my god, does that mean we don't have Denobula done either? Jesus. Okay, Denobula. Actually, I, I want to be careful about that. We don't have a lot of excess food. But you know what? I'm going to do it. Because we are positive on food again. But this will be the last one we get to do for a while. I love that I can build Romulan colony ships. Okay. So what do you think of it so far, Hammer, based on your experience with the tutorial? Research model. Cardassian Union has been assimilated by the Cardassians? Okay. I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean. This means we're going to have to get down here to Drago as well at some point once we've got more food. Physics research. Maybe. Could be on, could be on Star. That's true. 
shield booster module, plasma launcher. I'm liking the planetary power grid. Oh, it looks like. Model. Yep, Society One is already almost done. Advanced by medical. What? We're receiving a message from Hupirian Autocracy. They have used their own set of first contact protocols. Excellent. We're pleased to meet you. New Casus Belly. It is the Cardassians. It's going to be Enough political. Be I mean, true. Fair. First contact aborted. We have surveyed a new star system. Um, prosperity accords. We have surveyed a new star system. Okay, so this is the terminus of the highway then. Well, let's go see what this one's like. We've detected a non-Federation vessel. Uh, this wouldn't be an RTS, actually. This is more of a turn-based. Although... Actually, you know what? I take that back. I think you're actually right. They really have done this in more of a real-time kind of way. We've come across a fellow spacefaring civilization in the Saltrox system. We're attempting to establish a formal line of communication with them in the hopes that it will be mutually beneficial. Open hailing frequencies. Mr. Mercer? I tend to think of these as turn-based because of civilization, but this one really doesn't work that way. Sentinel, you need to move on and get some more surveying done. Recruit Luthen Sloan, or Luther Sloan. A promising Starfleet officer named Luther Sloan has been nominated for promotion. A veteran of many important missions, Luther Sloan's record indicates they're a quick thinker who will perform admirably on and off the field. Sloan's previous crewmates attest they are an asset to the Federation. Let's do it. Who are these guys? Huberian Autocracy. Anomaly reported. Really? Where? Good. Oh, look at that. 
It's no longer just occupied. Starfleet vessels improved. Discovery locked. Gas giant core. Our sensors have picked up magnetic readings originated from Marzen's two, Marzen 2's planetary core, suggesting the advent of new data. Research it. What? Denobula. Are we done? Under colonization. Okay. It'll tell me when they're ready. We have surveyed a new star system. Excellent. The highway node system has been fully surveyed. And that looks like it's the other end, so it does go from almost one end of the galaxy to the other, which is pretty wild. Let's take a look at that one. That'll be another black hole. Probably not a highway black hole, though. Oh, we're almost there. We're so close. 3.4K. Stardustlings. Upon touchdown, our deep core research team discovered that part of Mars N2 is entirely composed of refractory minerals born from cosmic dust. Our scanners indicate that the unusual composition of the planet's crust allows for easy access to the innermost layers of the planet without time-consuming drilling. Whilst traveling through one of the layers, the crew crossed paths with thousands of hibernating life forms scattered amongst the cosmic dust. Limited prior research tells us they are of the species Astropulvuli, commonly known as stardustlings. As of today, not much is known about them. An extended stay on the surface of Mars N2 to break the stardustling hibernation cycle offsets production of stardust particles on the planet. Direct travel to the gas giant's planetary core to study the composition will necess necessitate immediate departure thereafter. Um, let's do the research. Mission available. Oh, oh, is it time? Build the Enterprise, guys. The time has come for a new flagship to lead Starfleet's endeavors. The USS Enterprise D recently passed its shakedown voyage from the Utopia Planitia Fleet Yard. It will be the fifth vessel to bear this name and will be helmed by the decorated Captain Jean-Luc Picard. Have a new star system. The event space, the final frontier happens. Build the Enterprise? Hell yes. Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. It's continuing mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no one has gone before. Move the camera to United Federation of Planets. Yes. Ugh. Captain Jean-Luc Picard reporting for duty. We have surveyed a new star system. Okay, let me enjoy this game. Where's the Enterprise? Oh, I have a new spy ship, the Le Guin. But where is... Where's Enterprise? Gimme. Oh, Enterprise. It's a military fleet. Okay. Officer staff below critical requirements? What? That's ridiculous. Enterprise D design. 
<laughs> Never thought that Gord reading that Star Trek text would give me goosebumps, but it did. You are too kind. Thank you. Officer's amount is under operative uh, capacity. How do we fix that? Large fusion reactor, warp drive, large impulse engine, sensor probes, duotronic computer. You what? What? Why? I have isolinear. Why is it duotronic? Enterprise. What the hell? Excuse me. And why does it have zero of 200 officers? Okay. Clearly, we've got some stuff to do, but yeah. It said the thing it did on Sara. It did. this guy we are receiving a message from the Akamarian clans they have used their own set of first contact protocols to communicate with us thank the clan leaders you've made contact with the right Akamarians I speak for our leader so uh, sovereign Jorgen Dane and extend to you a message of peace and prosperity our renegade other half roams the galaxy aimlessly they are no more than savage pirates we trust that the United Federation of Planets bears no sympathy for such malcontents and will give us a hand in delivering them to justice for the benefit of all. We're pleased to meet you. Communications established. We're receiving a message from the Lysepian Corporatocracy. They have used their own set. Okay, so let's see. So it appears the United Federation of Planets has finally made themselves known to us. That means we can stop pretending. Good. You stand before the representative of Director Grisadzil of the Lysepians. You'll never meet a more powerful ally nor a more dangerous enemy. I suggest you speak plainly and quickly. Time is Latinum. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Ansara. Oh, uh, now looks like we've got new Cassus Ballet. First contacts aborted. Right. Systems surveyed. Oh, okay, so it's gaining new officers. We're just going to have to leave it here until it's full up. It's now at 40 out of 200, so it'll get there. Akamarian clans are out there. Picard slowly handpicking his crew, it seems like. Yep. I mean, it's actually filling up fairly quickly. It, it's going up pretty well. Excellent. The demographics tab breaks down our civilization by population data. It shows how much we have grown, which traits are commonly observed among our pops, and any modifiers that might change how our citizens perform or could affect their quality of life. Okay.
House provides a colony designations. Okay, so they're not done yet. Oh, but they do have available slots. There's no resort world, unfortunately. We're gonna leave Risa undesignated. Denobula. Hmm. Most of them are okay as they are. Let's take a look maybe at Andoria. Where's Andoria? Andoria is here. Okay. Oh, geez, we can improve so much here too. So we've got planetary administration. We can build four more things here. Let's build a construct district thing, uh, agriculture. We'll do a mining district. We've already got three energy districts, so maybe we'll do another of those. And we'll build... something for energy. don't seem to have anything for energy, unfortunately, or do we? No. running low on materials, actually. Okay, well. We'll do another mining district, because we're getting a little low on that, especially in this planet. So that should be okay. Now that means I probably need to look at some of these others, too, like How's Vulcan looking? How's that developed? That could be better as well. Yeah, need minerals. Okay. All right, so we're gonna have to wait for resources to accumulate then. But I'm starting to, you know, clue into a bit. We've discovered a biological arc buried under the surface of Rura Terra Vox 1A containing a single alien seed. Oh, 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 oh. Enterprise is ready. see what's out there. I'm still annoyed that it's not an ice linear computer based system though. Maybe that's what I get for ba building it a little bit early. I think 2364 is actually, you know, that sounds roughly correct. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's a little later than that, but that seems right. Maybe I'm behind on my research then. Twenty-three forty-three for the Enterprise D? I don't think so. 
Not for the Galaxy class, for the Enterprise D. And I don't think. Well. Maybe. I don't know. Technology. The last seed. The USS Sentinel scanned the alien seed archive buried under the arid soil of Ruritera Vox 1A. Only one seed was found. It is likely someone attempted to preserve this plant life genus before the planet went barren. The seed is still viable. Examination of the seed shows it to be a genetically engineered staple food crop. It appears to be drought resistant and impermeable to the effects of time and varying temperatures. Additionally, the grain grown from it is safe to eat, though its flavor is yet to be determined. The seed will be studied in, in an isolated environment to prevent possible contamination or gain 500 food and no future benefit by releasing it for study. I want the research. 63. So that's roughly correct then. The seeded code. The alien seed flowered as soon as it was brought aboard the USS Sentinel, and a strange phenomenon soon followed. The crew reported fl flaming plants resembling dwarf desert trees spreading throughout the ship. Further investigation proved these visions to be flickering holograms projected by the quarantined alien seed. Microscopic analysis of the seed reveals a complex metacode engineered into its genome. If not given the opportunity to sprout, the seed will scan for nearby intelligent life forms before it projects holographic images of its phenotype onto its surrounding environment to convince others to cultivate it. Decrypt the genome. Decryption of the seed's hidden code was quickly interrupted as the USS Sentinel was hailed by a mysterious voice. The voice identified herself as 800 BTB, or Boo the Botanist. This entity claimed to be an advanced AI who existed inside the seed's minute circuitry. Our scans confirmed the hail was coming from an unauthorized program aboard our own ship. Boo told us she was once part of a collective of interconnected intelligent seeds who planted themselves on dying worlds in an attempt to save their civilizations but some worlds were too barren to save. Now, Boo wishes to retire. She has been refining her own crop's genome for over a million years and says it, it is time to pass on to someone who understands its potential. Reward the AI for her kindness. Boo will be uploaded to the holodeck and given a specially crafted digital paradise. Her seed will be replicated, just in case. Not bad. All right, guys, I would dearly love to continue playing this and we will get back to it soon. But I have to be pretty strict about this not streaming past 3 a.m. rule, because if I stream until four o'clock again, that only gives me eight hours until I have to start streaming again tomorrow. And that's just not enough time for me to wind down stuff done, get to bed, actually sleep, and get up and be ready to go on before I have to go live tomorrow. So, I gotta wrap up now. <laughs> so, we're gonna find somebody to raid, but this is awesome. It's like Stellaris, only it's pure Star Trek, and I love it. So, uh, let me get a look here at what we can do. Also, my eyes are kind of burning, because like I said at the start of stream today, I really didn't get a lot of time to sleep last night. I had to wake up today, very early. And I did get to go back to sleep, but I don't think I slept enough. Um, Looks like Simcopter1 is playing some ATS. I'm just kind of scanning and looking to see if anyone else that I know is playing this game. Even Eitre is not playing this. 
Although, oh, well, Burke Black is playing it, but he doesn't need our raid. Maybe we'll go raid Trey anyway. She'll get a kick out of having us been uh, playing the Star Trek game. I'm sure she'll be curious about it. So let me do that. Thank you for being here, Ansara. Thank you for being here, everybody. I really appreciate it that you guys could have been anywhere spending your time doing anything anywhere you wanted on the internet and you decided this was the place to be. So thank you very much for that. That means a lot. We're going to go raid my good friend, A-Trey. Uh, uh, I can't type. There we go. A-Trey. Come on, bot. There we go. That is not A-Trey. That is me. Bot. You haven't done that to me in a while. What the heck? Here, I'll type it out for you. That's her link. And I will get you the raid call. All right, guys. Here at the Library of Lore, we use... Uh, here, uh, now that I've saved... We use... Shh, it's a library raid. You can bookmark with the heart emote and the wave emote and the shh emote of the channel if you are a sub. If you are not a sub, you can use the twitch raid and the tomb raid emote. In other case, sub or non-sub, please feel free to use any emote you feel is fun and appropriate for a raid. If you have emotes of your own, maybe emotes from another streamer from Twitch themselves, feel free to copy the raid message, arrange the emotes you want to use the way you want them to appear. It'll all be good in my book. So let's get over to a Trey's channel. We're going to raid her, even though she's not playing this game, because... Trey is maybe the biggest Trekkie I have ever known in my life. She is seriously the biggest Star Trek fan. Uh, to the point that she's even been drawn as a lower decker by the lower decker animators themselves. So uh, she will definitely want to hear about the game. Unless she's already been playing herself maybe in an earlier stream or something like that. But she will definitely get a kick out of the fact that we were playing it. So let's get over there and see how things are going. It looks like she is playing a game called Inside. And I believe that's related to a game that was brought up in chat earlier. Um, isn't that the one that's related to Limbo, if I'm not mistaken? So uh, we'll see how she's doing with that and what her plans are for playing this new Trek game. And I will see you guys over there. And I will be back, as I kind of alluded to. I'll be back tomorrow afternoon, starting at noon, in approximately nine hours or so. And so I'm not sure exactly... Let me see. Let me just check my schedule. What Do I have anything scheduled for tomorrow? You know what? I don't have anything scheduled, so I don't know yet what we're going to be playing. Maybe some Starfield? Maybe some more of this? Maybe some MechWarrior 5 Mercenaries? I don't know. But whatever it ends up being, it's going to be pretty good. I've got a few games on the go right now. I'm kind of itching a little bit to maybe get back to some, Star, uh, to some Starfield, but we'll see. It's going to be fun regardless anyway. You guys know that. So uh, I'll see you over in Trey's channel. Thank you so much for being here. It means a lot. Have yourselves a wonderful rest of your night, day, evening, whatever it is where you are in the world. And I'll catch you again real soon. Bye for now.